And hello, everybody. Jim Masters here with our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. This is the Jim Masters Show Live. And how are all of you? Hope you had a good Easter and Passover holiday this past weekend. We certainly did. Very beautiful time with family, and we enjoyed ourselves as well. And hope you had a really, really nice, joyful holiday weekend. Of course, we were here on Saturday. We had two shows on Saturday, actually. And then we were off for Easter Sunday for time with family and uh, church service and things of that nature. And now here we are back. And we've got a, a brilliant actor, playwright, singer, musician extraordinaire, good friend, uh, with some Irish in him too. So we're going to have lots of Irish crack. <laughs> good friend, uh, Dan McCormick is with us live and direct from New York. He's going to uh, do some cool things for us again. And we're very excited to have you here. How is everybody? Welcome. Again, I hope you had a terrific holiday. This is our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. We started some 375 episodes ago, almost a year ago, coming up on our one year anniversary. We're going to do a nice celebration towards the end of April, early May, when we hit our one year anniversary of exciting daily episodes of our Pretty cool Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series with inspiring conversations, amazing guests, literally from all walks of life, all fields of endeavor, all genres from Broadway and television, Hollywood, music, film, stage, uh, as well as inspiring people, health and wellness, uh, food experts, comedians, comedians, sports stars, a uh, little of everything for everybody here. Lots of variety on the Gym Master Show Live, and you never know what happens during the show since we are live. We don't edit anything, it's all live. And I love live because I work in television and radio. I've done this kind of work for a long time as a TV and radio personality and presenter, host, journalist, actor, writer, producer, stage MC, voiceover artist, writer, producer, the whole bit. And um, so we started this show as a way to bring back that old school way of doing talk shows. Uh, think Johnny Carson and Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas, uh, Dick Cavett, where, warm, inviting, welcoming, conversational styles were really paramount. But we take that style and we merge it with today, with a modern vibe and modern sensibilities and a modern twist of today. And we have a fantastic time doing it. Hey, I want to show you something here that came in, one of the gifts that came in, which again, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're with us this past weekend, we showed you that Halloween box filled with all kinds of treats from Kathleen in New York City. Kathleen Walker, uh, I mean, that was like a, not an Easter basket, that was an Easter box. And it was filled with all kinds of goodies. And we showed all of them and thanked her on the air this past Saturday. Now we wanna thank Maureen in Arizona. There's a little green tea in here, but let's see if we can bring it in close. Can you see what it says there? It says, Mr. Lovity, hashtag Masters Mantra. This is one of our newest items here on the Gym Master Show Live. This was a gift from Maureen in Arizona who loves our show. And she had it uh, inscribed there, engraved where it says, Mr. Lovity, hashtag Masters Mantra. As you guys know, I use hashtag Masters Mantra often. I've been doing it on Facebook with... Uh, really inspiring commentary and observations of life. And then I started the Master's Mantras uh, verbal and visual inspirational series on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, which is you're watching right now, what you're watching right now. So hashtag Master's Mantras have been something that I've been doing for a long time. The Mr. Levity comes from the fact that uh, in the summertime, I said, the show is about light, love, and levity. And I said it too fast and I said, Lovity. So the viewers call themselves the Lovities. They call me Mr. Lovity. They call this Lovity Hall. They welcome our guests as Lovities. Our viewers say they're part of the Lovity squad. So this beautiful gift came in from Maureen in Arizona. And it says, again, Mr. Lovity, hashtag master's mantra. What a beautiful gift to receive uh, this week from Maureen. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. I really appreciate this. We're going to use this. It's going to be part of our show forever. And Maureen, a very thoughtful and touching gift. Thank you, thank you very, very much. Uh, that was a very kind gesture and a beautiful gift. I really love that. Mr. Lovity, hashtag Masters Mantra. Thanks, Maureen. We love you there in Arizona. Thanks to everybody watching here on uh, our YouTube channel. Anybody watching on the YouTube channel, we'd love it if you subscribe to the channel, share the channel with everybody. The channel is Gym Masters TV. Click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily exciting content here on the channel. 
uh, all the content, all of the episodes of the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, the Masters Mantra series, and, and everything we have on the uh, channel. It's a very active channel. So thanks to all of you who have subscribed already. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Subscribe to the channel. We do these shows just about seven days a week, and we've done about 375 episodes. And again, there's the address for the channel that you're watching right now. Uh, which is Jim Masters TV on YouTube. And we welcome you to the show. And uh, Red Robin is here. And uh, they are watching from England. We're so excited uh, that they're here. Actually, cousins of our very special guest. And we're very excited. And uh, Christina and Angelica are watching. So they wanted to make, I showed this earlier to our uh, guest, uh, Dan, and he's all excited that his cousins are watching from England. So welcome to the show. Dante is here in San Diego, California. Good to have you with us as well. Dante, nice to have you here. And uh, Kathy Short is here from Cleveland. Good evening, Kathy. It's nice to see you as well. And Willie is here from Holland, where it's 1 a.m. Nice to see you, Willie. Crystal is here from Connecticut. Nice to see you as well, Crystal. Thanks for joining us on the Gym Masters Show Live. Our friend Tesla Bella is here. Good evening, Jim. Mr. Lovety, thank you for joining us, Tess. And Tess sent this. This is a gnocchi board where we can make gnocchi from home, from scratch. We made some from scratch a couple of weeks ago, posted a picture. And now we have an official gnocchi board, courtesy of our dear friend, Tesla Bella, who sent it in. Dear Jim, enjoy gnocchi making. Much love, Tess. <laughs> Thanks, Tess. This is a wonderful gift. We're going to use this uh, often and with love. And we thank you for sending that in, Tess LaBella, the gnocchi board. We never had one before. You're the best, Tess. Thank you very much. We love you too. Mary Bishop in Florida as well is here. And uh, David is here. Welcome, David. It's a pleasure to have you here. You're looking forward to our show as well. Maureen is here. Thank you very much. Tess once again chiming in and everybody's here. June is here. Good to see you, June. We love when you are here. Thank you very much. You're the best as well, Tess. Love it. All these great comments coming in from, uh, uh, yeah, love it. Love it. I just happened to say that accidentally. <laughs> We're going to take a look at more of the comments as we go along here. But first, I want to take a moment to welcome our very special guest, Dan McCormick, to the show. Um, He's really, really a very talented guy. And uh, he is a, not only an actor, but a wonderful playwright and singer and musician, as well as I mentioned earlier. And most recently, his radio play, Gravediggers, was presented in 2021 with Dan in the lead role of Mac and Kate May, stage artistic director Roy Steinberg in the lead role of Charlie. It was broadcast on Off-Broadway, Abington Theater Company's radio, KUNM Radio's Theater Hour, which is an NPR affiliate. The play was also presented on Cape May Stage Virtual Reading Series and Detroit Repertory Theater's 65th Season Virtual Homecoming. It's also the acclaimed playwright of the violin that received its world premiere off Broadway run at 59 East 59 uh, Theater in New York City. And the violin received its first international production uh, as well in Prague, where it was translated into the official language of Czech. We're going to talk more about his incredible career. We've got some great video, music, and all kinds of cool things. But first, let's welcome Dan to the show. You've got Dan and Stereario right now. Two, two Dans. <laughs> which, this is to tell the truth. Which one is the, the real middle. Dan? <laughs> yeah, which one is live and which one is Memorex? I think you the know one. What? I was going to say that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Dan. How are you? I'm great, Jim. Thank you. My new friend for life, Jim Master. Masters, I so appreciate uh, meeting you and being here on your show. It's an honor. Thank you very much. Right back at you. And I hope you heard good things on the street about the show and me. And <laughs> I did. Yes. You've interviewed some of my friends. So uh, here and there. So that's cool. And I've uh, uh, been watching and catching up on the episodes uh, with a nice glass of wine at night and just checking things out. So I'm very pleased. <laughs> You're binging JMS live. We love it. <laughs> you are definitely a lovety, just as our uh, our folks are saying. Maureen and Maureen again, thank you for sending that incredible glass custom engraved, oh, wow. Mr. Lovety. Hashtag Masters Mantra. Maureen, I toast you, Maureen. Um, yeah. She works in the uh, yeah. You got your glass. Let's do a toast. Well, Let's do yeah, Irish uh, slancha there. There we go. There we go. 
There you go. Slancha. Uh, so at the moment, but. <laughs> you need a refill. Yes. <laughs> we are uh, excited to welcome you to Lovety Hall, Dan. Thanks for joining us. Thank That's you, from Dan. Maureen and Woohoo from June, Hi, who's June. our dear friend, of course. We love her. Kathleen in New York City. Hi, Dan. Welcome, Kathleen. Hello, we're Kathleen. still trying we're still trying to work off all that candy you sent us, Kathleen. That was unbelievable. Willie, who's uh, watching in Holland, says hello, Dan, our new Lovety. Welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live. And uh, Mary Bishop is in Florida. She says, hello, Dan. Welcome to Lovety Hall. Thank you, Mary. And Crystal in Connecticut says, hi, Dan. Welcome to Lovety Hall. Juanita in South Africa says, welcome to the show, Dan. Wow. Amy's wow. here, Mississippi. Welcome, Dan, to Lovety Hall. Wow. Tesla Bella in Florida. Dan, you are ready to be loved. My goodness. <laughs> Tess, you are the best, Jim. Thank you, Tess. I appreciate that. You're right back at you. And uh, this is great. Lovely. Uh, David loves lovity. <laughs> David. Yeah. Hello, David. <laughs> so, and uh, Ann Wozniak in Florida. Jackson Valerius says, welcome, Dan. Welcoming you as well. Kathy Short in Cleveland says, welcome, Dan. Nice to have you here tonight. Ooh. And toasts and cheers along with us as well. Well, I don't know how we're going to top that. You've got all this levity already when the show just started. we got to go on tour. Let's go. <laughs> That's it. The Let's Levity start. Squad. We are going on a Levity cruise, actually. We're doing a cruise with the Levity. It's called the Levity Cruise. Oh, wow. And wow. yeah, we're, we're putting that together now. We're looking at 2022, obviously, because you can't do anything now. But um, David says, hey, Dan. Hey, David. Christine. Dan Oh, do you? Yeah, we've performed together a couple of times. Good, good to yeah. see you and welcome to the show, David. And uh, Christine Clifton is here. Cheers, Dan and Jim. You're now a lovety. Excited to have you on the show tonight. Thank you, and your cousins in England. Hi, Dan. <laughs> Hello, cousins. I miss you. <laughs> and Eric Root is watching Congress Avenue in the house. Yes, Eric. <laughs> good day, guys. My old street where we grew up. So that's uh, my my one of my longest uh, friends uh, ever. <laughs> really? So tell us tell us where you grew up originally. Well, I we grew up. I, I grew up uh, in an area called Drexel Hill uh, slash Upper Darby slash Lansdowne. We were sort of a pocket of between all three of those areas. And um, but Congress was the street that I grew up on, and it was just a really really special time to be a, a, a kid. And, uh, and able to run around and uh, like hooligans and still uh, come home and watch the monkeys on TV and stuff like that. So it was, those, those times uh, were, were unique. And it was an honor to, to have all the friends that I have still in that neighborhood um, in Lansdowne and Upper Darby and Drexel Hill, the combination of all that and the Philadelphia area too. So th this was a little suburb outside of, uh, of Phil Philadelphia. Uh, yeah. So that's where right. I grew up. So you yeah. grew up in the Philadelphia area then? Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. I grew up right outside. Home of to uh, there, wonderful cousins who are all yeah. there from Watson, probably. And, uh, a lot of cultural there. flavor in Philly area. Absolutely. Yeah. It's also home to Action News. Dun, 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 parents in philadelphia in and home they, they actually moved towards the uh, i guess glenn mills area so um uh but my cousins like i said are all down in northeast philly philadelphia and, and a bit in south philadelphia as well uh, but do you get to go I'm down there to visit uh, yeah, i know we, yeah we, absolutely yeah i i uh, um as you said with the COVID, we talked a little bit earlier that was a little bit uh different this this time yeah. around but um Always, whenever we have an opportunity to do that, yeah. And my uh, I have nephews and nieces who live in Philadelphia too, so I always like to get down and see everybody when I when I'm able to. Family and, overseas uh, too, right? Excuse me. Family overseas in Ireland and other places. We were talking about that off air about having relatives yes. over in the UK and in Ireland as well. Right. We talked about that, and, and my family is from uh, uh, County Mayo and Shannon, and in. in you know, all throughout, but that was, those are the main areas that they, uh, you know, came from my grandfather specifically. And, uh, we had talked off a little bit earlier about, uh, my, my dad, my mom and I being able to travel to Ireland. What a just amazing experience it, it was and, yeah. uh, life changing in a in such a, a powerful way and a sentimental way and, uh, 
historical way to see where uh, your your heritage came from, your grandparents, and how little they had, honestly, and yeah. little uh, to say it was um, barren. It was it was you know it was that, and yet the family and the love that uh, that we have allowed to have because he came here is just an honor. So, um, oh yeah. And I, uh, because of that, I became a, a dual citizen of Ireland. That was, uh, I wanted to honor my grandfather and my grandmother because of that. And I uh, work with my mom and my dad to work out the paperwork and all that to try to become a dual citizen in, in honor of, of them. So uh, that's what so, I did. So good that Ireland allows that because I know some countries you can't, they don't, you have to relinquish the other in order yeah. to gain the new citizenship. And, yeah. uh, it, it's, and a, it's, a, it's an up and down window from what I understand. Sometimes they allow it and sometimes they don't. And then there's years where it's closed and there's a time where it's open. So I managed to to be able to navigate that and to help that the consulate was up here in New York. So oh, yeah, right. any problems that I had, I was able to, uh, okay, well, I live up here so I can work that out with the paperwork later. And, and I, and I'm honored to have it. It means a lot. The consulate's a nice uh, building, a nice place. And I've been there several times and it's really, uh, they're great people there at the Absolutely. Irish consulate there in oh. Manhattan, huh? Yeah, it's up, I believe it's up on either 59th and like Lexington or something, yeah. or 57th and Lexington. So uh, I mentioned a story um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, one of the Irish guests was on and uh, was talking about, and you've probably done this, uh, marching in the St. Patrick's Day Parade a couple of years ago, uh, invited by friends who happened to be from County Cork. Oh, and uh, they were from County Cork. So uh, we did the whole routine. We had the Irish breakfast in the morning, then went nice. to St. Patrick's Cathedral. And awesome. then you sort of line up with everybody and whatever contingent you're a part of. And again, yeah. friends that happened to be in Cork invited me to pop in with them. Um, and people from the, the consulate was there. It was really wonderful. We got to go to the consulate the night before. Um, we're marching along Fifth Avenue, and it's, it's about two years ago, marching along Fifth Avenue, and it's a beautiful sunny day in March, brisk, St. Patrick's Day. Everybody's happy. Everybody's having a good time, and we're smiling, and we're waving, and you hear the, you know, the marching bands and the cheering and lines of people waving and smiling on both sides of Fifth Avenue, and just a really terrific day, and I hadn't marched in that parade in years. Um so it was great to be invited to do it. Yeah. So we're marching along and I hear people yelling something at our contingent while we were passing them. And there were grandmothers there and there were children there and there were all ages there. So I'm waving and I'm, I'm just basically, you know, they're saying something out loud and I couldn't fully make out what they were saying. You. Can you hear me now? Can you hear, do you hear me now? I hear you. Nice in you, Jim. So I hear you, but you don't hear us. Is there anything on your end, maybe? Your computer? On your end, maybe? There we go. Do you hear me you now? Got you. You got you. Yeah, maybe something got muted. Uh nope. I'm I'm it's it's back. I don't know what happened there. A little it's hiccup. Just, it's just technology. It's crazy. <laughs> it's the way it goes. Anything can happen and you just gotta maybe be ready for it. Guests, that's enough. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> we've, we've, heard, we've heard enough. <laughs> yeah, we're done. That's it. That was a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, that is, it's, it's great. Cheers. We did that in a New York minute. Shortest show ever. 20 yeah. minutes. Right on. Exactly. <laughs> so marching down Fifth Avenue and everybody screaming and yelling and having a good time and everything. And I, they're, they're pointing at us and they're waving all different ages, grandmothers, kids, everything. So we're, they're waving at us and they're saying something. And I couldn't fully make out what they were saying. Um, I thought that maybe they were, because they were saying up something. And I thought the way they were saying it, maybe they were saying, you know, it's a New York crowd that can be very expressive and very, you know, uh, emotion on the sleeve and have a good time. And they were just like pointing. I thought they were saying up yours, <laughs> up yours, <laughs> up yours. So I'm marching along with my friends and I'm waving back because I'm saying, you too, and hi, you too, and you too, thinking they may be saying that. So my friend taps me on the shoulder and she goes, 
uh, Jim, what do you think that they're saying? I, said, I don't know. I, you know, it's got this up your, up or uh, the sound and almost, I can't think of anything else other than it saying up yours or whatever. Oh my. And they said, that's not what they're saying. You know what they're saying? I said, what are they saying? They're saying up cork, up cork. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when you you're marching and they pass, you pass by, uh, people, I guess, that are f have family from a certain area of Ireland, they go up Donegal, up Dublin, up Cork. So they were saying up Cork. Oh, but with man. all the noise and everything, I couldn't hear the Cork <laughs> part, but oh, it did my. have that or sound. So oh. that was hilarious. That was wow, wow. That was funny. Have you ever gotten a chance to march in that parade? It really is something else. Well, jumping in it, but not marching in it specifically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so know. it just fell into it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, not that bad. Yeah, it's, it's a little crazy. <laughs> That's after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I always keep it cool in Ireland in, on, on St. Patty's Day. It's, uh, it's a lot going on. So there tenor, is, you know. It really is. It's it's a crazy time. Although the last two, obviously, there's right. been nothing. But hopefully, it'll be back soon. Um, tell us about growing up in Philadelphia and some of the inspirations in your life that pointed you into, you know, the performance world, the arts. Were you the actor first, the singer first, the writer first? What came first for you? Well, definitely the actor first, and um, you know, we we were we were a very sports oriented uh, family, and um, uh, that was our main drive growing up. That was, that was it. We were baseball and basketball and, and, uh, you know, intramural football, all those kinds of things and stick ball back when kids used to still play that in the streets and, you know, and, uh, you know, and Nerf football games out. And so we were, we, that was our neighborhood. We were very, um, you know, that was how we grew up there, as far as, uh, the arts, the closest I could say is the arts is that my, my sisters uh, had a singing group when we were younger and uh, the McCormick five, my, I have five sisters. So they, uh, I have five sisters and I have uh, two brothers. I'm one of eight. So uh, my sisters had a singing group. And so I think I was exposed to music, but we, we, I, I didn't certainly sing with them or anything like that. As I said, we were more sports driven and, and but it, ironically, I always wanted to act. It was something that I I wouldn't say I was necessarily necessarily exposed to early on. It, it wasn't it wasn't that. And yet I knew I had a desire to to do that. I didn't know how to do it or how to go about it. It, it wasn't something that I um, I really searched out until I was probably in in, in college. And um, when I, you know, went down to Philadelphia and started taking some classes in um, Walnut Street Theater and uh, Wilma Theater, and um, I was exposed to it, but I, I was also reading plays, and which is an, it's a little odd because I, I didn't know where that came from per se, but I was reading play, plays in uh, accounting classes and finance classes. I was really reading plays. And I, I knew I wanted to, to be exposed to uh, theater, and yet I, I didn't necessarily know how to go about it. Um, and uh, so I remember getting a, you know, a pamphlet that I went over with my mom and my dad about Walnut Street Theater and Wilma Theater and these places where I could potentially take a couple of courses. And uh, but I, once I really thought that I wanted to do that as an act, specifically an actor. I started taking some, you know, auditioning for some community theater plays and that, that sort of thing. And, um, uh, but right around my sophomore or junior year is when I really decided I, I really wanted to be in the, as an actor. I, I just, I, I loved it. I was drawn to it and, uh, and yet I still didn't know how to go about it per se. So, uh, when I did graduate from Drexel University, I was a, a finance major with a very strong interest in the arts. And um, I took a job. They probably don't remember me from, you know, a sack of apples, a uh, uh, people's light and theater company in the marketing program at the department there. And I got a chance to see regional theaters and professional actors and um, while I was there, I, I have an uncle, uh, Call my uncle, uh, Jim Tracy. He was an actor in a play called Tracers. 
and they performed as a Vietnam War play that was very successful. And I was blown away by mm. that. And I said, when I got home, I said, man, that is what I want to do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, but how, you know, what do you do? How do you do this thing called acting, you know? And I had a, a roommate uh, in, in, in Drexel that moved out to California about a year before I did. And Michael is his name. And, you know, he had a roommate that they, I guess they, uh, you know, people move on. And he said, Dan, I got to opening my apartment. If you ever decide to, you know, you talked about acting, you know, if you ever want to really do this, you know, uh, um, now's the time. So I, I did. I, I drove across country, uh, which was just a powerful experience. It's awesome in so many ways. We can hold a whole story on that. And uh, but to expedite time, I I landed there and uh, got a job at a restaurant and uh, called uh, Maddie's on Melrose. And it was just a phenomenal place to work. And while I was studying acting at the Stella Adler Conservatory, and that's where I studied. And I was mentored with, by some terrific teachers. And, uh, you know, I got my SAG card out there. I was exposed to a world of theater, which I really wanted to do. And Jim, to say it was awesome is an understatement. It was, it, I was really, I, 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 I took it to, to uh, as a duck to water or a bees to honey. I just, I, I just loved it immensely. And, you know, with acting, I had an agent and all that, but I, maybe I'm talking too much, Jim. So I'm, I, you yeah, know, you're, yeah, I'm, you're telling the story. We're with you. We're but with I, you. I, when I was studying acting, I was not just studying a character. I think, uh, you know, in, in a sub, subconscious way, I was studying plays. I was exposed for the very first time to Tennessee Williams to Lorraine Hansberry, to David Mamet, to Edward Albee, to August Wilson, you name it, we broke down those plays by those writers mm. and in script interpretation class. And any of my friends who are watching or may see it later, they'll, they'll, they'll testify to this. We, we were, it was just, you know, chomping at the bit to read these plays and get to do scenes from them. And it was a powerful time in my life. Hard, you're brilliant. You're away from your family across the country. Uh, so it was difficult at times. And, and, you know, always that's part of the deal. But as, but as far as the, the, the actual uh, craft of, of it, you know, I, I was just, it, it was, they were, became a part of me. And so, you know, but it's one thing to study and it's one thing to learn these from these crafts, these, these plays and your scene work and breaking down characters. All that's phenomenal, but it's a whole different story when you're actually trying to make a living at it. Yeah. And, you know, as you know, in your own field, it's 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 a heck of a business in many, many ways. Brilliant in many ways, but the business of it is different. And. For whatever reason, Jim, and I can't really say what it was. I, I, um, I re recall specifically. I traded my roommate when we kind of when I moved to New York, and I, I said, I, I think I want to write. I think I want to write. And he needed a futon, and I needed a computer. So I, <laughs> I, I, I got. I traded my futon for him for his computer with a with a printer and all that. And I, and I wrote. My first play, it was called The Return of Devin Darby. Mm -hmm. And I sort of started writing it out in Los Angeles a little bit. And uh, and fr from that, it was people stole, told me, Dan, you got to keep writing. You have to keep writing. You got to keep writing. And I did. I, I've written an immense amount of material. And, um, you know, so... You know, I don't know where you want me to stop, but it's in regards. What to would you call the the big break for you with all of that as you were pursuing it and you had these opportunities and well, education? Was there like one early 
pivotal moment that really opened the doors and set the stage for you? As far as as far as getting the work seen or done or just in, yeah. It, 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 well, the violin is you know is uh, uh, that was off Broadway a couple of years back, and I'm uh, blessed to have a a wonderful literary agent in Marta Prager, and um, of the Robert Robert A. Friedman Dramatic Agency, and Marta uh, really believes in my work immensely. And, you know, she submitted my plays around and there was a, a wonderful friend and producer by the name of David Skinner, who I, uh, I can never thank enough. Da David read a play, read the violin. And I had been workshopping that play and developing that play with Danny Aiello. And oh, yeah. I, he was a good friend and we, we yeah. still miss him. He was, yeah, our, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah, Danny and I had sort of worked on that piece over several years and all that and made adjustments here and there. And uh, anyway, she gave had to, got the play to David and he read it and gave him a couple other pieces. But we, he really focused on the violin. And, um, uh, you know, it, it's 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 you know, it's a process to get the plays to to off Broadway or any play, just a matter yeah. of fact, and getting it up on its feet. Uh but the violin was the one that 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 landed, and um, in, in New York, in a, in a really full. I've had other plays prior to that, um, uh, several that I've you know in festivals and, and that sort of, sort of thing, and I have been done in colleges and university about 9/11. So I've had about other pieces, but on the level that this was at was was a very very unique experience, and um, it was a uh, you know just a terrific. Cast. It was directed by Joe Disher and Robert Lapone was in it as well. Pete Bradbury and uh, Kevin uh, Isola, and uh, just a wonderful group. And uh, the director's company was also a part of that. So I, I'm very fortunate that that was the piece that got picked up, and um, it, it we had a great run. It was all, always a limited run of the piece. It, it couldn't be extended because it fell into a certain uh, time when there was it was bookended already. But it, it got picked up by the Ungalt Theater in Prague mm -hmm. for its first international production, and um, you know it, it's and you're talking about going to Ireland earlier, how it got canceled. I was supposed to go out there as well, and it got canceled last year as well for my trip to go see the play. So hopefully, I'll get a chance to see that at some point as well. And uh, so that's that's you know in, in regards to the plays, uh, that was that was the one that kind of. Uh, has been really terrific and um, has opened a lot of doors for other interests for other plays and working with um, uh, Roy Steinberg on mm. Great Diggers and uh, being able to present that as a radio play. Tell uh, us about that one from folks who aren't familiar with it. Well, Grave Diggers was written at, it was my first play written during this time, we're at the tail end, hopefully, of this this uh, pandemic. But I wrote that at the very beginning of, of the pandemic. And it was, a, you know, it was for all of us as a universal uh, experience for our for us as together individually as a world. Uh, all around me, my in my world. New York was was closing down around me. Everything mm -hmm. was shutting down. Everything mm -hmm. I knew, loved. The city that never sleeps was, sleep. was sleeping. Yeah. And there there comes a time when there's a lot of you know what's going on, who's to blame, what's going on, all this, and what what is happening. And I needed to write about that, Jim, and I did. And you know, you oftentimes. Uh, I don't have an agenda as a, as a writer. I, there, there's writing is a very, it's a, it's a, it's a great thing, but it's a peculiar thing. Often you don't know when you're going, how you're going in it. You're, you're just kind of. Something going. sparks it out of the blue sometimes, you're even not. like uh, if somebody's writing a piece of music. I, I we had Melissa Manchester on yeah. um, a month or two ago, and she had mentioned that sometimes out of the blue, she will could be coming out of a dream too. She will be inspired. Something will trigger something in her 
to mm -hmm. run to the piano, start record and just start doing whatever is coming out of her, whatever the inspiration is, just do it on the piano and record it because it. the furthest you, the, the most time that you allow between the germ of the uh, inspiration and saving it and remembering it, yeah. you start to lose the elements, the essence of it. So she'll run to the instrument and she'll start working it out right then and there and she'll record it and then play it back and make it magic from there. Absolutely. I mean, there's there, I can totally relate to that when it comes to writing songs, you know, and uh, you have to grab the lightning when it strikes any, you know, and that's that's the interesting part about any creative process. And, you know, I I think with the the creative process in general, you have to be able to grab these things when you can, because you're 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 creating something out of almost energy. Basically, you're creating this this uh, this. Uh, whether it's a song or a painting, uh, you're creating it out of an emotion that, 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 that is touching you. And, but it, it is a spark. And oftentimes you have to go back to that spark, you know, so you grab it and then you go back to it and see what you have. And That's how this show, this series really started because for years people told me to do, you know, like an entertainment lifestyle talk show series, like you and I were talking about before it live on the air, because I was always so busy in my professional work here, there, and everywhere, either in the studio or on location or whatever it may be, yeah. never really had the time to devote this amount of time to it. And and it's a, it's a bit of a juggle because during the day, I'm very busy with the professional work, but it's something that came out of this pause time and has been uh, surpassed my expectations and reached so many people and reached me as well. And it's one of those moments where you either feel it and run with it, or you push it aside and keep waiting to do it. And I said this time, you know what, with everything going on, we're going to, we're going to make whatever we can of it and go from there. And it's just blossomed from there. Well, Jim, I, I also, I totally agree with that. And I, what I, what I, what I do think it is, is it's a, it is a gift. It is a gift that we are given. And I think it is a, it's a responsibility on our part. That's the way I've approached this. I, I, I feel blessed to be able to, to, to write specifically. I really do. I, I don't, I never studied writing. I, stu I, I absorbed terrific, great writing. I absorbed it and I absorbed those things and I went after it. But I, 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 through that, that search and that desire to, for something else that's out there, I feel like I have been given a gift and I feel like I have a responsibility to that gift. And with that comes the work that it takes to do it. And as you know, with your show, it doesn't create itself. There's an awful lot of things that you do behind the scenes leading up to tonight and every night that you do that. And that's, that's the work that you do that makes it look so easy. You know, you're just blessed to do it. You're just great. And I, I think that with, with, the, with the playwriting or songwriting is the same thing. I, am, I have, for whatever reason, I, I have a, a gift to do that. But it's, so it's my responsibility to, do, to use it. And I, I, I really do. I work my, my, my tail off to, uh, to get the plays out, to write the plays, to write the songs, to write the music, to compose them as best I can on a, on a piano, if I'm, you know, all those kinds of things that go on to it with, with the creative process. And, um, during this time specifically with the, with the shutdown, uh, I really feel very, very fortunate to have this opportunity to, um, uh, to, um, to be able to create during this time. And it has been a, a real, real, uh, blessing for me to do that. So, yeah. um, yeah. And you have, we actually have some proof of that, my friend, with oh, wow. some videos that we dug up. <laughs> oh, okay. It's like, Yay. welcome to, this is your life. <laughs> Dan McCormick. We actually have, and, uh, we, we want to share some of them and you oh, might great. place, you might play something live as well, but, um, a couple of really cool things here. Uh, one of them, uh, be bold and be brilliant. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, be bold and be brilliant is uh, it, it is 
as far as the where where this where it is in my life as far as the um uh, uh it's it is on my album eight for you eight dash four dash you eight songs for you uh but it is also the lead song the opening song of my musical that i wrote uh called broadway lights and uh the when you and i were talking about earlier about the you know where these things uh come from for me now the opening song the opening lyric of that song is you're you're really confused about where life's supposed to be you know and that uh you worked hard at your dreams but still they're just fantasy what's your next move you can't even imagine you're tired as hell but you want to throw the talent you hope and you pray for someone to give you the answer believe that someone is you so you grab what you are after be bold and be brilliant so when i wrote those lyrics and i was working with my collaborative team um my creative uh team uh with um uh paul blankenship and taylor isaac gray when we were creating the musical of broadway lights i you know this i had many songs already written and but that song was not the opening song and i had mentioned to the guys i said i have a um I have a, a song that's going to be on my other app, my album, Made For You, but I think it might work as an opening number for, for this. And uh, I played it for him, and it just sort of set the tone for this, for the story in many ways, who the people were, what they're lost in their goals and their dreams were. And uh, before I forget, in regards to the, to the music, um, I had been working with a, a producer in Philadelphia at a third story recording for three albums, Broadway Lights, Edge of America Bound, and Eight For You. And his name is Scott Herzog. And it's third story recording. And, and Scott has been a producer friend and just a great friend. And we've been working well together on those three CDs. So I, I, before I forgot with all we're talking about, I wanted to mention him. And um, he's just terrific in many ways. And so, with that song, it it um, it sort of sets the tone for the 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 uh, the musical, and it also sets the tone for the album. We also did a video for it, so I don't know how much you're going to show of that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we have it. Yeah, I just want to show you a couple of things coming in here. Um, I shot the video too here in New York, and oh, I you did uh, it in New York. Yeah, yeah, with uh, with Marcus Leone co-directed it. We shot it all around New York City. And uh, I had shot a lot of stuff about the theater uh, closings on the theater. Yeah. Uh, um, so I managed to kind of edit those into the piece. So uh, Marcus and I uh, started our own video production company too for independent vi uh, artists. Uh, yes, I saw that. Yeah, really cool, cool stuff. Diane McKenna says, "Hey Dan, it's Hi. Harry and Diane. We're so proud of you, XO." Oh, uh, thank you, Harry and Diane. Juanita, um, no relation to Jack and Diane. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Juanita, two of my, two of my best friends. <laughs> uh, Juanita says, "Love your life philosophies, Dan. Glad you're getting to live your passion." And you. she's in South Africa. And uh, hi, Jim and Dan, and all lovities. That's Merlin in Canada. And uh, let's see, a couple more coming in here. Uh, of course, June says, yes, it's it's a gift. We're talking about, you know, these blessings that we have to be able to inspire and uplift people through the work that we do. It really, really is. Mona is in Louisiana. Hi, Jim, and welcome, Dan, to Lovety Hall. And hello, Lovety. So she's welcoming you as well. Um, yeah, we're going to take a look at that. Be bold, be brilliant. And then uh, we'll come back. We've got several more and a lot of cool things to see here. You're going to love this, folks, uh, from the vision of uh, Dan McCormick. Be bold and be brilliant. Here it is, and then we'll be back. And in the meantime, Dan, refill your glass. <laughs> okay, great. Got the water still? Great. Well, thank you, Jim, and thank you, everyone. I, I hope you enjoy the video and the, and the song. And, and, uh, so. G gives great. people a sense of uh, some of the, uh, the yeah. talent and the prowess that you have. Here it is, gang. Enjoy. Use the 
well where life's supposed to be You worked hard at dreams, yet still they're just fantasy What's your next move you can't even imagine You're tired as hell, you just wanna throw the towel in You hope and you pray for someone to give you the answer Believe that someone's yourself, so you grab what you are after Be bold and be brilliant 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 You get knocked down, but you didn't get knocked out So bring them all around you show them what you're all about You got one shot So what is it you gotta say Be on fire Be a winner and seize the day Be bold And be brilliant 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 the lead with you and your own destination with you and your heart and your soul for you hold the keys to your future so you can forever be bold be bold and be brilliant be bold Deserve it. Be bold and be brilliant. Be bold and be brilliant. Be bold and be brilliant. Be bold. Be bold. Be bold and be Very nice, very nice, my friend. Really, and, and so apropos for the times, too, you know. The timing. Well, yeah, I, I, exactly. And I, we had shot that video, Marcus and I, um, uh, a, a while ago. And I wasn't sure when to put it out, honestly, Jim. I, I, there was always that hopeful optimism that, oh, it's going to open and open and open and the theaters. And I spoke to my uh, director of Broadway Lights, uh, uh, Paul, and I showed him the video, uh, Taylor as well, who are seen in the, uh, in the, in the video. You know, when should I put it out? You know, when do you think? And Paul said, now, you, you know, put that out now, man. Put that out because it, it really reflects what everybody's going through. Right. And, you know, the, I'm, I got a lot of flashbacks wa watching that and with the, how we shot it and how it was edited and, and in this studio here, we, organize that and edit it and put it all that together and to have you playing that for your audience means geez it means an immense amount to me jim 
Well, I want to show you what's happening here. Jennifer Barry in Pennsylvania in Allentown, Tent oh, PA wow. says, Dan, I'm dancing in my living room up on the mountains there in Allentown. Jenna wow. Zen, blessed be. Mary in Florida says, wonderful video, great song, great singing. She's in Pine Island, Florida. Anne is in Southern California. Wow, awesome song. Of course, June says, so brilliant, love it. Kathy Short in Cleveland, Ohio, terrific song. England represented, Red Robin, brilliant. Juanita, South Africa, great song, very inspiring, nice video. And in Jacksonville, Florida, awesome with claps and hearts. Linda in St. Augustine, Florida, love the video. Maureen in Arizona, what a fabulous song about how real life is. Give it your best. Life is what we choose. Willie in Holland in the Netherlands says, nice clip with claps. Kathleen in New York City, very nice with claps as well. Mona in Louisiana. Love that video. Oh, thank you, everyone. Wow, that's fantastic. Lovely on the Gym Master Show Live. Anytime you're down, Dan, just pop in. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that what you said? Oh, okay. That's what we always say. Where? Where? Whenever you're down, just pop into the Gym Master Show Live and it'll pick you up if you're having a down day. Just oh, hop, gotcha. hop on as a guest and you'll. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, geez, that means a lot. And I, I, I'm, I'm honored to. It, it makes me, you know, when I watch that, it just, I'm, I'm, th I'm thrilled to be a part of the, just a, even a small way really. And, and, you know, in the th theater community here in New York, it just means yeah. a lot um, that we're, that we're here and we're all trying to waiting for this, these theaters to open to and open up and every lights go up. We, we did, we were out, able to get a um, presentation at the duplex theater and uh, earlier, but right before the pandemic, it was just fantastic, Jim. Oh boy. What a, what a great experience. Yeah. And, but now we want to build on that and have it produced in a, you know, certainly in a, uh, in other venues, uh, when things open up for, for people. And we're, we're excited about that opportunity. We, I, I actually just submitted to some theaters today. My, my, uh, good agent. luck with that. Yeah. I want to show you San Diego, Dante CD. He says, uh, Danilo, wow. Incredible video. Uh, San Diego representative Diane, uh, says that was awesome. Dan love you. Um, R and die. And uh, David says, uh, so great to see and hear you, Dan. Been a long time since Tin Pan Alley. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we uh, uh, David and I worked on a, a song called, it was one of my first songs called This is Tin Pan Alley. And uh, you, you realize uh, 28th Street is the original Tin Pan Alley, and it was where the music business was. That's right. There's a little plaque uh, on the corner of Fifth Avenue, I believe, in 28th Street. And they were tearing down the last remaining buildings uh, on Tin Pan Alley. And Dave and I collaborated and try to save the buildings. That's it. And, you know, and we worked on a song called This is Tin Pan Alley. And we um, uh, put the energy out there. And those now whether we saved it or not, Jim, I'm not sure. But but in reality, I think we we, we certainly put the energy out there. Those you got the ball standing. rolling and we're right. Got the vibe. So I got I the like vibe it. out there and people yeah. jumped on the train, which is perfect. Sometimes yeah. it just it's a matter of just getting the wheels turning right just getting those wheels turning um it is. It is. and uh, it, it'll work out and uh and you'll be okay with it as you are in the next video i'm okay with it I'm okay <laughs> like, with a, it. like a smooth segue <laughs> well yeah that's a great segue and you know another video that marcus and i put together uh in, in for our video uh company and uh um we're that that those lyrics Again, talking when you're saying Melissa Man Manchester with, with, with um, you know, where ideas come from. You know, I think a lot of these with this particular songs, I can't say specifically what the what the reason was. But the 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 line, you know what, I'm OK with it, came out to myself. And that was the the the, the seed, I guess it were, as it were. The to, genesis of the idea. I'm OK with it. You know, I'm okay with it. You know, the, the, but again, getting back to there's the spark, as you know, Jim, and then there is the work. Yes. And then there is, there is the work behind it. You can have uh, a lot of sparks, but it takes the, the work to make it a, a fire. You got it. You got it. You put the, put the timing in and to write the song and compose it and then do the video. It's, it's, it, it's a process. So I enjoy the process of that. But with this, particular song it was you know don't let don't let other people take your power away from you mm -hmm. don't 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 let someone else bring you down 
I mean, things are hard enough. And so if you if somebody wants to, uh, you know, drag you down, you know, don't don't be a victim in your own life. You you just be, hey, hey you know what? I'm OK with it. You know, and so that's that's the uh, was the so the uh, the overall, uh, you know, background of the of the of the message of the song. Um, uh, so I know you're going to play the video, so I won't say yeah. too much. About it. Maybe we can yeah. talk afterwards about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm OK with it. <laughs> and, uh, and we've all had to say that we've all had to say in many different respects, you know, as we've been pivoting and yeah. reassessing our lives and, and yeah. everything that's changed and things that are going on. Uh, some things, you know, it's, it's, you have to be okay with it, it because yeah. it's a lot, it just makes things smoother, easier. Uh, and I mean, sometimes even the, even the lyric, the, the, it's a long, it's, it's funny because the chorus of this song is a big, it's a big one, but, and it's repeated, but it, it's, you know, so many people in this world try to take your power. They never want to see you smile. They want to see you cower. The yeah. best revenge for that is to keep on going to the lap, the lap behind your back, but all the while you're knowing that you got a secret deep inside. It's called passion. Mm -hmm. passion for loving yourself never goes out of fashion. So next time someone tries to lay on all their, BS. You grin from within. You say it's all good. I'm okay with it. So that's that's the chorus. And so, but that that came out of what we all go through, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, hopefully, I it's an entertaining and catchy song. So that's the, that's the idea too. Do you know who also believed in what you just said? As far as you just got to keep going with it and going with it, and uh, you know the chips may fall where they do, but just keep going. Is our friend George Burns? <laughs> oh, there he is! Yes, hi George. There he is. He says hello, and he, uh, he made it to a hundred, and he I just know. kept going. I he know. he kept going, so he's a yeah. good testament to just keep going, right? Right on. <laughs> oh, wait, how about his movies? Oh God, and with John Denver, and Oh God too. Hey, he's great. Right? I'm holding God in my hand. There you are. <laughs> Quite powerful. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a good testament for keeping going. Uh, he definitely, obviously, definitely did when he lost Gracie, you know, years ago, and he just kept going. He could have re retreated and he lost the love of his life and he just kept going and providing humor to all of us. So here we go, and gang. I think, Jim, I think he had a great gift and he was using it. And that's what he was doing. I think. That's, the, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. I'm okay with it with Dan McCormick. Here we go, gang. Enjoy and then we'll be back. World's coming to an end, I forgot to hit send. There's a bug in my ear, just spilled my beer, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I got me no job, I just got robbed, and a man's to open, no place to go, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I'm walking down the street with shoes on my feet, get pushed to the side, I can't hit you, right, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. So many people in this world try to take your power. Never wanna see you smile, wanna see you cower. Best revenge for that is to keep on going. Lap on her back and all the while you're knowing. Now you got a secret deep inside it's compassion. And pass for loving yourself goes out of fashion. So next time someone tries laying all that bullshit, you grin from within, you say it's so good, I'm okay with it. I'm broken my boy, maybe was a girl Either way, I'm gonna shout it to the world I'm okay with it I'm okay with it Being your girl, I should've just stayed Either way, it's cool cause I'm living by the rules I'm okay with it I'm okay with it I messed up my fault, give my all Make it a top of me, but just stop I'm okay with it I'm okay with it So many people's world try to take your power Never wanna see you smile, wanna see you cower Best revenge for that is to keep on going The lap on your back and all the while you're knowing That you gotta seek deep inside sounds called passion And pass for love yourself and yours out of fashion So next time someone tries lay on all that bullshit You grip with it, you say it's so good I'm okay with it I'm okay with it I'm okay with it I'm okay with it Freedom 
to pray what you want to say You know I feel the same, there's no one to blame I'm okay with it, okay with it Living it, live and learn to forgive Then I hear you say at the end of the day I'm okay with it, okay with it Got one shot in life, cuts like a knife Go with the flow, 12 and you know I'm okay with it I'm okay with it Say it straight from the heart, it's never too late to start Everyone win, share the love within and say I'm okay with it I'm okay with it I'm okay with it I'm okay with it We're more than okay with that one. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. That was yeah. really cool. Really yeah, cool. Uh, we really enjoyed shooting that. And I, uh, the, the, the friends at the end, Marcos is in the video. He's the co-director of it. And my friend Mindy and Jackie were, were in it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, when we shot that video with DNM music videos that we, we, we put, put together, we, um, you know, again, going back, it's, it was a, you're, some of that sh footage was shot a while ago. Then we edit it and you bring it back and you piece them out and you, you just make it work. And, and I think with the, with these, with the, the, the videos and uh, you know, they tell a story. It, it's, I, I, I like to have a, they're, they're, the, the videos are a story as you saw with almost with um, be bold and be brilliant. You're kind of following this character in a way. And, and we, we and that's part of the, the, the playwriting and the, the acting part of all kind of meshing in with these, uh, right. You know, with the background of the music video, tapping it's, into all the senses. Yeah. 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 And it's, yeah. and to do these things during the shutdown, you know, and, right. and I, right. and I, I just th feel that, you know, you have to, it, the store, the, the songs are about keep on going. And that's what, what I just, you know, chose to do. in during these times, you got to keep going and keep working through this because, uh, art is needed. Art helps people. Your show. Look at all the people you're helping with, Jim. I mean, it's fantastic. And I and I feel with that with the playwriting, the songwriting. I had an opportunity to do this during this time, and uh, I I felt like you know do thought provoking work, but fun and entertaining work. You also and um, and that's that's the goal. And and hopefully people are moved by it and pleased by it and have fun with it with it as well. But and especially now, it you know just touches you in a, in a good, good way. That means a lot to me right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sometimes, you know, we do some of our best work when it isn't scripted, when it isn't planned, when it isn't perfectly rehearsed to a T and out of, um, sometimes out of loss, sometimes out of tragedy, sometimes out of, you know, moments of despair, some of the most extraordinary things can happen, which is, it reminds me of when you see uh, a cement highway and a cement barrier and in between the barrier, which is cement, the highway that's cement, this tiny little crack and a flower somehow is growing through that crack. Yeah. You're like, there's no soil that I see. There's wow. no fertilization. Where's it getting the water from? And this little flower is growing through the crack in the highway where oh, the, it's near no usual life support, but there it is. And it's determined and it's resilient and it's coming out of adverse adversity and it's turning the uh, lemons into lemonade. Oh, I love it, Jim. I could, right on. Can't say any better than that, but absolutely. That's really, really right on. And, and um, I, I, you know, that's, that's what the, what the goal is. And, and I, I think uh, it's been, uh, it's, it's, it's nice to people are enjoying it on your show. It's, it's a lot. Isn't it cool when you get a chance in your life to live your bliss? Yeah. Yeah. It really it's, is a blessing. And, and it's something that we, we realize uh, in our lives all the time and we don't take it lightly. Um, Martin is here. 
and says, hello, I, Martin. It could be you're, my dad or my brother, but I think Ma it might be my dad. <laughs> Martin, Mc, Martin McCormick. And uh, Merlin in Canada and Ontario says, very catchy tune. And Willie is giving you claps. Thank you. Jennifer Barry says, I found my, my new favorite song. Um, and June says, what an energy rush. Austin Thank Field you. says, great song. Mary Bishop says, uh, wonderful, inspiring video. Uh, claps from Kathleen. Dang, that was awesome from Maureen in Arizona. Claps and hearts from Kathy Short in Cleveland, Juanita in South Africa. Fantastic, catchy song. I can totally walk down the street singing that. Oh, thank you so much, everybody. It means but the so trick much. is Juanita in South Africa, can you do what Dan did? One minute having no shoes on, next minute he did. Oh, that how, was shot in Cologne. Oh, boy, that was that? cold. Boy, how I, did he was, do that? <laughs> that was that was cold. And about we shot that in like 30 seconds because that, that was that was shot in the winter time, believe it or not. My feet were freezing. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I gotta get my 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 shoes, but my boots back on. Uh, Martin says it's your brother. Oh, it's Martin, my brother. Awesome. Yeah. In Philadelphia Martin. and Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yes, Mart, I, it's my brother, my older brother, Marty. I'm so happy, Mart, you joined us. That's fantastic. Absolutely. And absolutely. my mom and dad are on there, I, I believe, as well. Uh, they're all they are supporting me. It means, it means immense amount to me. Welcome to the Gym Master Show live uh, experience here, gang. McCormick family, we welcome you guys and uh, hope you'll join us regularly. We're here every night. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click oh. the notification bell, all that fun stuff. Yeah, we have another awesome. video here. Um, this is a cool one, too. This one is, now this is one of the happy hours. So yeah, yeah. tell well, us about the whole happy hour thing. Well, cool. first of all, uh, whoa. first of all, the, <laughs> welcome to Dan's own happy hour right now. The, 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 uh, uh, the video, well, the song came out of uh, about what we all know and love in New York city and that's happy hours <laughs> and that time between five and eight or something. And where you get together with all your friends after work and all these great uh, times of just talking and gathering and just BSing with one another and just sort of letting it all relax is just a, a, a really, really great time. And I have a, a great group of friends that we used to do that prior to the pandemic and hopefully soon we'll all get together again here in New York and we'll do that. But I know what I wanted to, with the song is that it was a song that I know, at least everybody I know that can relate to this. And, you you know, your your bosses are barking and biting all week. And you, you, so the song came out of, you know, being around uh, uh, times that are difficult, and yet we know we have a relief and a fun relief with gathering of friends to do these things together. And uh, that's what I really, really enjoy uh, with this song. And by the way, all the songs that you, these three specifically are from my album, Eight For You, that's on iTunes and Amazon and Spotify and all those, uh, those uh, outlets. So, um, and working with uh, Marcos again on the video, and was just a joy to work with. And we shot that around uh, the, the, the city here again as well. And sometimes when the city's just open, with some of the places just open, we were able to get a margarita after nine months of being in. So that's in there too. So we, we had a really fun time. So hopefully the audience will enjoy this too. So Absolutely. Here it is. Here it comes. Get ready, folks. It's time for some happy hour. Wherever you are around the world, somewhere it's five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Jim. That's it. Boss been barking and biting all week You think you'll get sick when you hear him speak You're a pain in my neck, you say every day Under your breath as he's coming your way But you grin and you bear with another meeting again Cause you know at the work you'll be meeting your friends For happy hour For happy hour, yeah, uh-huh For happy hour for happy hour, yeah, all right. I say na do 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 do
Feels like the island's all the tropics somewhere And that deadline tomorrow, well, you don't even care So get them up, gang, raise your glass, raise your beer Cheers to the good times and that boss who ain't here for happy hours For happy hours For happy hours For happy hours Yeah, uh, uh, I say not to me With each tick of the clock, you're getting closer and closer. Living life, living large, lots of love, lots of laughter. I'm the hour. We're happy hour. Yeah, uh huh. We're happy hour. We're happy hour. Yeah, alright. We're happy hour. We're happy hour. Yeah, uh huh. We're happy hour. We're happy hour. A great one. <laughs> you know what's great about New York City? It's one of the cities where you can film something like that and have a great time doing it. And everybody around you just keeps doing their thing and going about their business. <laughs> Absolutely. They don't know what you're doing. They're and just jogging like, or whatever exactly. they're doing. It's like you're shooting it in, a, in your own world. And, and another day in New York. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Jim, what I, what I, I, again, with these videos and the songs, it's the what 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 the impression I'm 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 getting from the just even viewing them on your show and hearing the feedback is just it's been you, you know you, you you don't have to have a lot to to create a lot you know what I mean you have to have a, a, a the, the 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 drive and the the, the love for it and. Yes. And, you know, we, we shot this video for nothing, <laughs> you know, and, and on the phone. Been there, and, been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, and that's what you do. And, and um, so it, it, it means a lot. And, and what I wanted for that song and what I'm hoping even more of is when later on when things really open up again, it's like, hey, man, let's play that song. Happy hour, you know, because it really is a fun song that everybody can sing along with and have a good time with you know so absolutely kenneth is here good to yeah. see and hear you on the show looking great time change here in mexico caused to miss some of the show glad able to catch happy hour great so if you miss anything with this episode or any of the episodes of the gym master show live all of them are archived on our youtube channel gym masters tv you can see this yeah. full episode and all 375 episodes we've done so far, wow. which is amazing. Uh, and while you're there, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click that notification bell so you don't miss any of our content. We love that. Um, Jennifer Barry is having a good time. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, they, they, they love the video. I want to show you some of those comments that are coming in here. Uh, happy hour. Willie says happy hour. Dante in uh, San Diego. Wow, great music. A real happy hour. Let's toast for incredible video and song. Christine Clifton in North Carolina. This video and song resonates. Nothing but happiness, carefree feelings, and joy. Happy hour, fun Absolutely. song. And uh, let's see. She's still toasting in the Holland area. <laughs> Austin Field, another wonderful show. And um, love this. And Linda Tracy says, can't wait to actually be out dancing to happy hour. My lovely sister. Coming by the way. Yes, I think she posted something earlier too. Let's see if we can bring that up. Hey, Dan, you're so creative, talented, fun, dedicated, passionate, and compassionate. So proud you're my brother. True oh. friend, love you. Oh, Isn't wow. that great? Thank she, you, Linda. She sounds like my <laughs> sister too. It's great yeah. when you have loving, support of family uh, and friends. People say, you know, what's your favorite Zen place? I say, well, the ocean. But prior to that, 
uh, doing the work that I do, but the time spent with loving family and friends, nothing ever tops that. That is really right, right. numero uno. Great video. And Juanita says, uh, lovely feel good songs, just what we need in these times. Juanita in South Africa, Kathleen in New York City. Great fun video. Was it fun shooting it? I would imagine. Uh, yeah, you know, it's 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 always fun. I mean, but it's like, you know, when you get down to nitty gritty, you got to you got to create it. <laughs> it's work, right? It, it, the result looks easy and fun. It, it, it's fun when it's done. And it's fun, fun when it's this, done. This, this is what makes it fun. It makes all the hard work worthwhile. And I know Marcos with the he'll attest to that as well. And I know he's watching, so I know he's happy. And uh, yeah. also with the um, uh, you know, uh, Scott Herzog, a third story where I record, I know they're all very pleased that this is being aired. And, uh, yeah. So it's really yeah. Cool. yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, so request it at your favorite bar, say, Hey, play happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, and hopefully we will all get together because, you know, we're all in the tri-state area here we'll get together and we'll actually be toasting, uh, for real in person at a real happy hour. That that sounds like a plan. I like yeah. that idea. I like that idea. Diane says, uh, happy hour is our favorite. Love the lyrics and the video. Thank you very it. much. And Jennifer's loving it too and having a good time. Thank you very much. Austin Field says uh, another catchy tune. He's loving it. Amy, uh, who is a poet. So she knows good poetry, lyrics, fun lyrics. She's enjoying it as well. Um, but wait, folks, there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. The new and improved. Um, oh. We have Coney Island Girl. Tell us oh, about wow. that one. Coney Island Girl is one of my first videos, and it's from Broadway Lights. And uh, I shot that with a, a good friend, Eldon, and we went down in Coney Island and shot that video uh, in the freezing cold. And what I like about the video, there's something something really, really unique about uh, not only Coney Island, but the, the beach at a time and, uh, you know, when it's cold and raw and damp. And there's a visceral reaction that you get when you when you're feeling that time with the ocean and the mist and the fog. And um, it, it is there is a poetry about it. There is a, um, a yearning about it, uh, th that, and, uh, the experience that you feel. And I, I try to capture that with this song. And this was also a time when Coney Island was really being, t being changed dramatically. And you'll notice in the very beginning of the video, you know, you'll see scenes from those who know New York shoot the freak was on the, Things that got torn down, some bars got torn down. Uh, everything was changing just dramatically. And you weren't even sure if Coney Island was even going to come back, quite frankly. Right. It is now to, uh, you know, I guess um, Luna Park is there now. But with, with with those things, things, you know, everything changes in New York, especially. That's what's great about it. But it's also what's sad about it at times, too. And uh, this is a, a, a story song and uh it is off my off of my broadway lights cd my first cd and it is also a song in the musical broadway lights so um anyway i hope you enjoy it it's, a, it's not as peppy but i it hopefully is meaningful and you don't have to eat 150 nathan hot dogs to watch it either <laughs> <laughs> no. coney island coney island all right here's coney island girl The gypsy on the strand Stares deep into her palm Tries figuring out her fortune Figuring what went wrong Trash can freak Dancing to the bullets Painting pollocks all around them Laughing insults at the losers But it's he who's a clown too And the Coney Island girl Walks alone in the sand She quit at school again this year Says she thinks enough in Afro land Parachute tower pretends that it's Eiffel Lights up with the thunder that rolls and that falls 
Someone's getting tired, wants to get in the cold Condos rising high while the boardwalk's getting sold And the Coney Island girl walks alone in the sand She quitted school again this year Says she thinks enough an astrolabe A lot of emotion in that one, huh? Thank you, Jim. Yeah, it, w it was. And uh, I, uh, you know, I, I love playing that song. It's, it's, it's just a very subtle song in its, in its um, journey. And, um, you know, what, what has been a unique experience for me is, you know, I, I wrote these songs, obviously, for my, for my uh, albums. But with the musical Broadway Lights, uh, it has been such a phenomenal experience to have other people sing my songs. Yeah. And with just a phenomenal cast that we had for, for Broadway lights and to have varying arrangements uh, from Taylor and directed uh, by Paul and to have this, these actors who are so wonderful, some mu such beautiful musical theater talent to sing Coney Island Girl, for, for example, and just hearing a, a, a just a, a beautiful voice singing it in Sarah. And um, that's been a real honor for me. And, and, and it, it's something I, I really want more of. I really want, uh, you know, uh, others, people to hear my songs and and sing the songs. I I I get an immense amount of joy about that, and um, I'm I'm hoping that's going to be part of the future for me. Writing for other singers and artists. That's something I I'd be honored to do. And I think from a from a playwright standpoint, I I there's something about you know when I'm writing my own plays and you're you're in your own world and you're seeing these characters, the way you see them. And then you, when it's up on stage and it's interpreted by an actor, it's just a whole different dimension to, a, to this, to this, to the, to the, the, you know, to the, to the writing. And I can, I, and so I, Is I, that hard at all. I know sometimes it depends on the scenario, I guess. Um, I know I've heard sometimes some people, they're so, um, attached to the creation itself, whatever it is, yeah. that 
it takes a moment to be able to be comfortable enough to allow it to hand off from you, the creator, all of the energy, the emotion, the vibe, you know, exactly the way, you know, you visioned it and the meaning and what you hope people get from it and hope if they're going to interpret it or, or use it, do it, play it, whatever it is that they get the essence of it and they do it justice. So sometimes in the beginning, when you're first starting to allow the material that you've created to then be uh, presented by others, there is a little bit of a release that you have to allow happen because it's your child, it's your baby. Um, and it doesn't always come easily naturally right away. You have to be, sometimes I'm sure you're very, uh, like anybody would be um, specific about maybe where it ends up and you want it to be you know, respected and you want it to be matching the essence of what it is, the body of work. Was that hard in the beginning for you to allow what you've created, what you're performing, what you're doing to then be handed over to others to yeah, it's, make it, what it of it, what they will. Yeah, it is. It, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not easy. Uh, you know, it's not like, Hey, here, take this. There, right. there, 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 it's, it's, uh, you, you put immense amount of work into it and you, you know, uh, uh, the way you're hearing it in your for a play, for example, or even a song, you have a certain, you know, you hear it from your own ears. The hardest part of that is hearing it from somebody else's voice. And there, there, there is a, a trust factor that you need to have. Right. And, uh, but that trust factor comes out from often from the other, from the artist who's taking it. So for example, for an actor. So, you know, there's, when it's good, Jim, it's it sings. Do you know what I mean? Oh, when, yeah. when, when when somebody, you you know, I I've certainly uh, been in from an acting standpoint, from an auditioning standpoint. You know, there's there's different levels of 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 uh, what somebody's bringing to it. Some are some are you know not where they should be necessarily, but some they just knock it through the park, and you can't even imagine it. You're they just take it places you never wow. could have visioned. Yeah. How would you do that my god wow it's just right. phenomenal and i i've had that experience uh with with broadway lights uh from a playwright point because i i wrote the, the book and the lyrics and i and i wrote the music but i didn't arrange it and orchestrate it and i didn't direct it that was and and having a t 10 actors with the the full length version and then seven actors with the cabaret version because I, I have two different versions of that of that and but to have that experience to see these brilliant talent because they're all you know they're all coming from where they came from in, right. uh, in where their background is they've all went to school and they've studied and they've their voices are anything you know from where I'm at I, I'm I'm not even close to the level of what, what what they could even what they can do and vocally. And so when you hear that it's angelic. And so when you, you, um, you know, so, but to get to your point, there is a trust factor and that's, that's important that, that, that it, it's like me, me as an actor interpreting somebody else's play, they, mm -hmm. they, or, or a new writer, I, I, they, I, I have to, me as Dan, the actor have to earn their trust. And that, that comes again with the work that I bring to it, whether I'm auditioning for the first time, 99% of the work when you're, when you're all before you're even like I just mentioned you earlier, it's all your prep time, Jim, that you do for hours and hours until this moment, that, that is what makes it look easy. And so with it's your, you're a professional. So when you're, when you're as, as the actor or the vocalist, all that thing that they're doing prior to, to presenting that for either a director or an audition or something that, that you're honoring their work by doing that. And that's, that's what needs to be there. And mm -hmm. when, when it's not there, you know, you, you know, you don't get the role number one, but you, so you, you, uh, or you don't sing a song or, or whatever. So, but I think that it, it is, um, you earn the trust by the, by the level of talent that you bring. And when you, and let the weather, and with the talent comes the work. So when you do that, you are earning their trust in, in, a, in a way uh, that is respectful to what they did and what they, the time they took to that seed that they had to develop that story into 
into something that is now being produced. It's a big deal. And it so is. I, I, um, I, uh, I value it immensely in many, many, many ways, more than we're even talking now. And uh, it's, it's even hard to put into words because it just yeah. it's a feeling that's so deep. Yeah. I mean, I certainly enjoy playing them myself, but what I, my, my talent is what it is, what it is, you know, and, and then uh, the, to, to have other people take that and uh, it, it is a collaborative process really in the end, once you write specifically a play, Jim, or something, or you, you, it's not a novel, you're, you're, it's not an, it is now part of this space that, that can be interpreted and, you know, worked on and dived into and you know i've been fortunate really to as a as a playwright and actor even sometimes working on my own pieces as an actor and so i that that's sometimes harder but i learned from er, early on uh i mentioned jim tracy who was in the uh who who i saw in in uh the, the play tracers jim directed many of my pieces earlier on when, when i was acting in them too i don't write them for me but a couple times i did that and I had a time and he just said, you know, Dan, you got to let me direct it. You just got to let go. And I said, you're right. I do. Mm -hmm. And then I had to approach it differently because I was really the actor in my own play. I was, I was, an, I, I had to break down the character that I would normally at any other time I would. I was, I had to memorize the lines and do memorize my physical actions. All these things that I do as an actor, I had to do my own play. And because you're not memorizing the pieces, you're writing it. You, 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 you. It's maybe a little bit easier, but in reality, uh, it's not. So uh, I think there's, um, you know, if that answers your question a little bit, is it easy? It's it's it ain't easy, but when it when it when it when it flies, it's it's uh, amazing. And and, and and trust is the big thing, right? The trust yeah. element is. Uh, I've been really fortunate to be, to work with some really terrific actors, and there's, uh, you know, with uh, homeless and how we got that way. That was done in New York and. Um, Detroit Repertory Theater. There's great actors who perform those roles. Just boy, you know, there's you can't see it in the back, but there's a poster back there. The one of Detroit Rep and uh, Brian and Rashard. They're really just terrific friends who just put their heart and soul in the pieces. And uh, it means immense amount that they want that people want to do the work because they they like the work so much, and so right. they feel like, hey, this is something we we want to you know, go for. So they want to be a part of it. Exactly. That's, that's always fun. The answer is you. We have another one here. That's oh. really cool. Tell us about this one. Uh, the answer is you Th that, uh, again, uh, it comes out of the, the, the thought process of who's, who is going to, uh, you know, resolve the difficulty in a certain situation in your own life or, or the other one that can live your life as you. The answer is the answer is you, and but that's part of it. But the the you know the the songs so, sometimes when I you know the writing and some my father and I had a discussion about this the other day and I re, you know what the songs are about. I know where the seeds of them come from, but then they become somebody. There other people interpret them differently. It's like which is great, and and I, I enjoy that process. But um, you know the, the 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 seed of this. You know what is this energy that's drawing us together? I want to hold it and feel it and know that it's forever. And who makes my heart skip a couple beats? You know, it became a love song, you know, really. And so whether the seed started out that way, uh, it's one thing. But when the song is written, it becomes something quite different, you know, and it becomes a romantic uh, story. And with the video of this, we just shot it right here in this apartment, Marcus and I. And uh, we thought we wanted to do something really, really fun with um, – you know, emojis and characters and things that are popping up, something that was, you know, different from the other videos. And uh, we just had a, a lot of fun with that. And I just, uh, it was just a simple camera shot and having a lot of things pop around to do that. And um, uh, it's been a journey of learning that process too, of, of, of making new videos. So I had never really done that in any way uh, with Coney Island Girl and a couple other things I did, but we, um, and with this particular uh, uh, thing, working with Marcos and developing these uh, videos, this was an idea. Let's just keep it simple, shot it, and we will do these things. So um, hopefully you'll enjoy this uh, video and the song. The answer is you. Here it is. Enjoy, everybody.
What is this energy that's drawing us together? I want to hold it and feel it and know that it's forever. And who makes my heart skip a couple feet? When I find myself singing and dancing in the streets. And why do these thoughts of joy come into mind? It's the craziest thing and it happens every time. Oh, I question the question, I'm so happy and yeah, it's true. And all I keep thinking is the answer is you. The answer is you. The answer is you. The answer is you. The answer is you Alright The answer is you When I see the sun When I kiss your lips When the morning come When I think of you Throughout the day When everything's right Seems to go my way And into the night the stars up above when I hold you close and know that we're in love cause the answer is you the answer is you the answer is you my baby the answer is you oh yeah me laugh and smile when it's silly and cry my shoulder at a sad movie and who's my friend and someone to rely on in times of doubt who's helped me to stay strong and who's got dreams for future together and just makes my life Better and better The answer is you The answer is you The answer is you My baby The answer is you The answer is you The answer is you The answer is you My baby The answer is you The answer is you The answer is you The answer is you A lot of times the uh, answers to life's most incredible questions are within because the answer is you. Who do we yes. have there? Well, there's, there's the star of the, of the video, you know, so that was the one of the stars in the video along with uh, the, the other the cats back here. So what was fun about that video, Jim, in regards to, you know, again, creating things out of, uh, you know, what is there and we looked around the apartment. Well, geez, how can we, you know, make that uh, something a part of it? And these were gifts for my sister Linda. And lo and behold, they were in the in the play because we we needed things to incorporate into the the video. And Is that not amazing how that happens? That's exactly yeah. how George Burns ended up on this show. Oh, wow. It's exactly how. Gilligan from Gilligan's Island is there. He came from Dream of Denver, wife of Bob Denver, who played Gilligan. She was a guest. Oh, wow. Wow. Casper the Friendly Ghost. Uh, this is like 25 years old. One of our uh, friends sent that along. It was a family heirloom. Oh, this nice. crystal turtle that came in. The silver lab from a TV shoot in Europe. Jimmy the Clown, this childhood toy, and the I Dream of Genie bottle. And then we've got a massive panda that's about this big that came in as a birthday gift named Lin Lin. What? All of these things sort of uh, this I usually end the show with when I tell everybody relax, breathe, yes. love one another. We oh. got this when we were in Newport, Rhode Island on a family okay. vacation. So all of these things that you yeah. like you say they're around become part of the essence of the 
creativity. And we yeah. sort of did that here. And that's what you're doing with these videos. It's cool. Yeah, it's like, what do you, what can we use here? Can we take off the living room wall and use it the video? <laughs> yes, exactly. Or on our, or on our show. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So whatever you, know, you can use in this, and where you can shut it up, and and also, Jim, like during the pandemic, how can we do this and be creative and during how this? How can you time? be creative? Well, a couple of people commented about the room that you're in, yeah. um, and sometimes we do a little sort of like Edward R. Murrow used to do on CBS. It's uh, person to person where they used to go. He used to sit back in his chair with his uh, cigarette and look up at the big screen. And now we're at the home of Lucio Ball and Desi Arnaz. Lucy, tell us right. what we're seeing. Or Jerry yeah. Lewis, tell us. What. So tell us about this cool room you're in and what we're seeing behind you. Well, that's my apartment that we were in. And the, 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 what you saw in the video, that painting is, is, is right there, that wall. And I did that painting that was in the video of Answer Is You. And what, what I what I wanted with the apartment was was um, uh, I uh, all mostly original work. That's what I wanted for mostly. You know, that was the, unless they were a gift or something like that. That's what I wanted in, in it. And whether I painted or my sister is an artist, my niece is an artist, my mom is an artist and um, my aunt is an artist, my aunt Alice. And so I've come from a family of painters in original material and so i that's what i really wanted to do with the the the, the apartment and uh i wanted artistic but homey is the way i the, the the look i went for and so some of the things you're seeing in the background are um, even the lampshade with the music notes on it i saw in one of the videos yeah that was from my sister linda i said 90 percent of my apartment is decorated for my sister lynn so <laughs> I look around, but she's got good taste and it goes up on the wall. So as you see in the back, the, John, the you know, the John Lennon uh, Rock and Roll Hall uh, fame exhibit, uh, that was the annex here in New York. And there's, uh, I'm, I'm, I, with me, I am a, um, I can't paint faces and things like that. I kind of get my hands dirty with my, my the things when I, you know, create art. And uh, so a lot of the things you see in the background are uh, visually, uh, it's tough to see them specifically, but uh, there is uh, that that was that was originally intended as one wall. Uh, I said all of my art is going to go on one wall. That's where it's going to be, and and subsequently it's expanded a lot more than I an anticipated. But that back wall there is all original pieces for the most part that I had done, and my niece had done some of the things and uh, on the other uh, other wall, and um, on this wall is a little bit of the, some of the theater work. That is, that is uh, from Detroit Repertory Theater, from the off-Broadway show, The Violin, uh, Broadway Lights, the, 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 uh, some of the early productions that we're working on that. So, um, and so that, that's, that's the idea I wanted with, with the, 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 uh, the apartment. And, uh, Very you know, nice. Surrounded uh, by things that mean something, that yeah. matter, that you know, the family has uh, suggested that you have acquired and it has sort of a flowing theme, uh, you know, things so that again, uh, uh, inspire you. And, and, you know, I, over here is my family, my mom, my dad, and, uh, mm -hmm. and nephews and all that. Yep. And, uh, I'm very all about. to have, uh, just a wonderful family. I'm, I just, just so, so blessed to have that them support me in what I do and, so it's been great extended family, aunts and uncles, but you know, my mom and my dad specifically, it's just really special. Mm, absolutely. So. Absolutely. And uh, to have a close relationship with family is so important. Uh, and we're the blessed ones because sometimes people don't have that uh, or they they're missing it and they crave it. So when you do have things in life, and I think if anything that this year reminded us is to count our blessings and, uh, hold on to those things that, and people and, and experiences that really, uh, you know, are there for us and we're there for it's so, so incredibly important. Mm -hmm. uh, another video here, the last of the wild. Last of the wild ones. The last of the wild ones. And that, that, this, that, that, this song, uh, was, was originally, um, uh, you know, a, a little bit about my old neighborhood and all that. When we, 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 we grew, up, grew up in a time, as we had alluded to earlier, talked briefly about when you could still run around the streets and just yeah. kind of go, uh, you know, yeah. 
yeah. do the things that that kids you, were kids. You, kids were kids. You didn't. You, there was no thought process. We we we, we had a, a unique time in our life to do that. But th this is a story song that um, uh, you know we were the last of the wild ones, and and yet the the the, the lyrics of the song is a journey of childhood and and that kind of thing too. There is as life goes on, there is a, there is, there is love, there is loss. There are things in your life that come along unexpectedly. And, um, uh, you know, you have to, um, kind of deal with as an adult and, mm -hmm. and that's just the way it is. And, uh, we all have our stories with, 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 with the, with that. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah. hard times for all of us but you yeah. you keep going through it and yet uh and yet what with the, with the piece is is um uh, is a series of hopefulness don't let us be the last of the wild ones let let us let their teach our children that there is there's still teach the youth that there is still fun out there there's still yeah. things that we we have and you know the original idea when i wrote the song and had it in the on the album I wanted to shoot it in my old neighborhood. That was kind of what then shoot it with friends who I knew and all that. And it, then, it, then, the, then the pandemic happened and the shutdown happened. Yeah. And I had this song, uh, in, I, what was happening around me that this, this became something quite different. And I felt, is there a way that this song can relate to what is going on now and that we can make it, you know, so Marcus and I shot a lot of video around what was happening. Uh, around us, closing of parks, uh, the masks, they're, they're, the the theaters closing down, all, all these things that we just didn't know of anything about. Our world was changing, and uh, so. But the, uh, the 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 need to create during this time. This was the very first video I shot for Eight for You when Marcus and I shot. And I, I just simply refused not to create and I needed to create what was happening around me at that, at that time. And, um, I was, we were shooting a lot of different videos anyway. And when decided to make this the, the, the first, um, song to, to release from eight for you, the, the album, I wanted to, uh, show respect for all, all of us that were going through this time. And it's a bit of a time capsule uh, of, of sort. And um, so, and it's all shot in the neighborhood of New York City and, and around with my surrounding area of, uh, of uh, Ch Chelsea and a bit of early Midtown and a little bit between downtown. So, uh, but it, it's again, it's a, it's a, it's a pacing song. It takes its time up until it, you know, goes to a place of, of, uh, uh, positivity as well and uh, hopefulness mm -hmm. you yeah. know it seems like even though you come from the philadelphia area in pennsylvania and you have a your roots are there and you have a love for where you're from your hometown and philly and the whole thing that you've also really adopted new york city and really understand the essence of the city and the heartbeat of the city and what the city has to offer and what it's all about huh been over new york for over 20 years and right. I, I jim i always knew that i wanted to be in new york it's a strange thing i i knew that i wanted to be in new york city i remember w looking in the back of the uh simon and garfunkel album which was greatest hits and seeing there was a a, a, a a image of them leaning against the fence and um but it was new york and i said i knew i said i want to i want to go there i want to be there i want to be there and i i remember i knew that very very young and five or six, I knew I wanted to be in New York City uh, without really knowing too much about it. But I've always desired to be here. And I was very fortunate to be able to, you know, see such an uh, coming here in New York when I did seeing all the things that I seeing as a delivery person and all that. I got to see all these different places that, mm. that many New Yorkers who lived here for life didn't see. I was everywhere, literally. Right. And I got to see these places and I I, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm, I, I love New York. I yeah. love it immensely. And You've seen so it, uh, through thick and thin. Yeah. Yes, through thick and thin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
I can understand that completely. I, I you know, grew up uh, in New York, not in the city, but out east on Long Island, further out east. And they do say, you know, you can take the New York out of the New Yorker. Well, no, you can take the New Yorker out of New York, but you can't take the New York out of the New Yorker. No matter where you go around the world, and I've been so many different places, I always end up bumping into somebody from New York yeah, yeah. on the top of a mountain in Greece, yeah. in the desert in Arizona. There's always somebody there. Oh, well, we we were we were originally in New York, and I'm like, that is so amazing. And what's great too is, I mean, you know it because you're in the, in the theater. Is when you have your family, your friends are able to come to New York when the productions are up or something, or see it, and it's just a joy. I love it immensely. It's just it, it's thrilling to me to have that opportunity, and it's one of the reasons how I set up the, the my apartment is when somebody comes in, they feel welcome, and it's art. It, you're in New York when you arrive, and you feel York. like you're a part of the. The Big yeah. Apple, exactly. Yeah. Let's take a look at that cool video, folks. Uh, we're going to enjoy this. The Last of the Wild Ones. Again, McCormick. Time sure have changed since the time when we were kids. When we ran the streets and raised hell, and that's all we did. Drinking beer in the ball field's always ready for the next big fight. Yeah, with the neighborhood punks who came out like the bats at night. But with age comes a life of responsibility. Can't live in the past and the fun I used to be. A lot of truth in that, but we swear we won't give in No, as we hop on our bikes and hear the roar of our engines Cause we're the last, the wild ones Yeah, the last, the wild ones Oh, the last the wild ones Ride in spirit Into the desert sun A lot of love, a lot of loss in Those days gone by And I'd be alive if I said I'd Never cry And those tears I shed Are both of joy and pain as we raise a glass in honor of the names and the battle lines have all been drawn give in to our fears oh man we soldier on so through the fires the road the road we choose With our brothers, but when I lose, cause we're the last of wild ones, yeah, the last of wild ones, oh, the last of wild ones, right in spirit. Into the desert sun So crank up the music And shout it out loud No matter what and forever Stand out from the crowd Hands on our hearts Take pride in our country Damn sure teach our children so we won't be no 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 the last the wild one the last the wild one oh the last the wild one Right in 
to the desert Very beautiful. Really, really well done, my friend. I'll show you some of the comments. And in uh, Florida says, magnificent, bravo. Love your music and expressions. Juanita, South Africa, still up with us. It's already tomorrow in South Africa. She's a trooper. Truly wow. beautiful song. Uh, Kathy Short in Cleveland, Ohio. Love it. Um, Christine Clifton in North Carolina. Oh, my. Seriously, so many feelings happening with this video allows us to see feel what we all went through this past year great job with this one june says bravo uh danilo dante cd says singing down the memory lane heartfelt uh, amazing and there's more in here as well that uh, have come in tess labella uh, in florida crying uh, Kathleen in New York, uh, in the city, right uh, there in Queens, New York, loving your music and the videos. Um, Maureen in Arizona, beautiful. What an amazing video that shows how our lives uh, took such a sad turn this past year. She works in the medical field in a hospital, so she's been on the front lines there. Makes uh, me tearful. I pray this virus is in the rear view mirror soon. Um, Mary Bishop in Florida says, powerful song. Tesla Bella says, beautiful voice is magnificent. More coming in from our faithful, lovely viewers here on the Gym Master Show Live. Amy, great, great song captured this year in emotions. Um, there's crying and I guess there's ugly crying. Tess, oh, oh. ugly crying Juanita. Uh, so a range of emotions, which again is what art really does. We sort of absorb what we do from it and then we react accordingly. So some smiles, some uh, evoking memories, some crying and tearful. And uh, so that's what it's about when you touch people through art, right? Yeah. And I, I think with, you know, watching that video, the, the amount of the work that went into that and uh, making it the, the first uh, video and you, it reminded me you don't know where things are going to land and I, I i as we talked earlier with that song i had a different interpretation in my mind with that song i had a whole different idea where that song came from and what the thought process of what was about and then you know the pandemic happened and i guess it the 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 message of that is you know, create, create because you don't know what's where it's going to land, and you don't know how it's going to uh, arrive at some other place that maybe it's more meant to be, and so you 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 just don't even Broadway lights the musical. I wrote that as a as a uh, the, uh, the the music I wrote as an album. I, I didn't know it was going to be a mu musical, I, I, but the you follow the energy of where these things take you. And it's important that you create because you don't know where they're going to land. And that's that's. Uh, but then when it does land, you have you have it, you have something uh, to offer. And I feel that with with these things, you have to navigate the energy that's coming your way. And if it's if it's if it lands where it's supposed to, great. If not, then uh, it's it's sort of really my my in my way, my career as well is is I started off as an actor, and still act to this day. But the need to create to fill led me into playwriting. Yeah, and the 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 the, the playwriting led me into music with my brothers brother Sean and my brother Marty and learning to play piano at a later age in life. Uh, I, I didn't, you know, I'm not a great piano player by any stretch, but I, I you know, follow the energy where, where, where it takes me. And that's what I've been trying to do. And 
uh, as best, the very, very best that I can. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that I, I, I have uh, some wonderful supporters and June, who you, June Ospa, who's been uh, who, dear friend, your uh, friend got me on the show and I've worked with June on a wonderful play called the morons. And she helped to, to, to develop that with me. And I value her friendship and her belief. And she came she early supporter of the Broadway lights, the musical. So um, I just think that the, the, the overall message is just, you know, create and but do the work to create. It is, it's not easy. And, there's and don't no hold problem. off either. Cause no day is tomorrow is not guaranteed. There's no, you know, extended warranty on tomorrow. Every second is precious. Every moment fleeting, yeah. uh, the clock stops for no one. So if you have that inspiration, if you have that desire, do it now, do it, do it now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, a little bit goes a long way. So just a little bit every day, it goes a long way. And, and, and uh, in 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 finishing it you know what i mean that's so, right uh, like they used to say in the brill cream commercials years ago a little dab will do you <laughs> that's it yeah. so uh you did you i know you set up with the piano there did you want to uh tickle the ivories a little bit maybe well, with a song uh while everybody so I, hears it i don't know let me see what i can do here i uh uh i'm gonna <laughs> Varied state, but I uh, <laughs> in a varied state. I like that. <laughs> he didn't say a varied state of what. He just said I'm but in I, a varied I, I state. The piano. There's the piano. Bob. There's the piano. I do have it. And, uh, <laughs> it's real. It's not a beatbox or anything. <laughs> uh, well, uh, let me let me. You know, uh, I'm gonna get too personal, but let me say. Uh, Tessa Teller says you're a true lovety. <laughs> true lovety. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see what can I play? Uh, uh, we played some uh, fun songs. Uh, well, I'll, I'll play something that. Um, uh, well, here's one I can do. That, that, uh, uh, I don't want to be a down. We'll play two, maybe two, and maybe a little bit more upbeat. Uh, this yeah. is this song is called "Working Class Hero," and um, it's all in the sharp keys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whole song is in sharp, and uh, it's about uh, a guy who doesn't have a lot, but he's a, a worker, and he's reaching out to the love of his life. He says, "You know, I don't have a lot, but I have I have things to offer." Working class hero. No, I ain't no astronaut Walks upon the moon No, I ain't no movie star Saves the world from doom No, I ain't no athlete Who makes millions from his way So let me tell you what I am Baby, here's the thing I'm a working class hero Working class hero Working class hero, working class hero. I climb the poles, I lay the pipes, I fix what's broke, I make it right. And if you're mine, I paint you art, I seal your love, I feel your heart, cause I'm a working class hero, working class hero, working class hero, working class hero.
Let's build a life together. Let's set the plan somehow. Let's show the world forever. Let's say our wedding vows. Cause I'm a working class hero. Working class hero. Working class hero. I'm a working class hero. I'm a working class hero. A working class hero. A working class hero. I'm a working class hero. 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 Really nice, my friend. Really nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You, you get, you can just see that you're all in when you're doing it too. You're just totally, you're feeling it as you're presenting it. Thank you. Yeah. It reminded me of some people who I know very well and, uh, you know, so it's, yeah. yeah. Uh, Connecting with them. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. You right. Know, hopefully your audience can relate to that. And, um, uh, so that, that, that's, um, that's one. And, uh, uh, I don't want to end down. Let me see, maybe one more. So, uh, this is uh, my brother was a uh, this is for my brother, my brother Sean. What kind of song could ever come into this one? When you face your worst fears, you cry and you rage, but you don't run. When you take the best shot and offer to give, when you're beaten so bad, but you still can live. When you're searching for answers to no reasons why, but don't question your faith, you don't even try. When you're weak and you're warm, so it's strength and man, a profound courage to your family and friends. When you want to be hell, it's us to hold, makes laughter wink and a joke you told. Oh, what kind of song could ever come to this one? Well, I called Sean, cause it's our lives that you make one. Yeah, this one is called Sean. Yeah, this one is called Sean. Oh, this one is called Sean. Yeah, this one is called Sean. Yeah. We should dance through the night. Just smile on your face, yeah. You never give up the fight. You never give up the fight. You never give up the fight, Sean. No, 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 no. This one is called Sean. Yeah, this one is called Sean. Oh, this one is called Sean. Yeah, this one, oh, this one, yeah, this one, oh, this one, yeah, this one, oh, this one, yeah, this one is called Sean. It's called Sean. It's called Sean. Really nice, really nice. He's heard this before, Sean. Uh, that was for my brother who passed away. So he, mm. Sean, was a a big supporter and lover of music, and mm. uh, I, 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 at that time, I wanted to uh, uh, write a song for Sean because, yeah. but I wanted an, uh, an uplifting song, and 
Right. Uh, because Sean loved rock music. He just adored it. And he was just a, just a, so I didn't want the song to be a, like melancholy and, and like, uh, and, and, and sad per se. I wanted it to be a thought provoking and emotional, but also a real, you know, a rock song. So, you know, I'm doing these today on, on a, uh, you know, um, you know, just a, me on a, a piano, but with acoustic, but with, with a band and stuff with the rock and the, and the guitar and all that that layers into it. It's really f just really been fun for me to hear that. And uh, I had an opportunity to play it live a couple of times. I'm just moved by that experience that, that uh, others who have lost people that they love, they also uh, uh, can uh, appreciate this song. And uh, it means a lot to me when they do so. Uh, that was called, this one's called Sean. And I would uh, imagine you've probably had people come up to you and, and when they hear a song like that, they sort of open up about their own lives to exactly you. Right. Yeah. Well, we played that live I, I, a couple of years back. Um, uh, you know, I, I, it's funny. I'd like to play live more in New York, but it's, believe it or not, it's tough to get a good piano. Uh, but sometimes you find them. And I, I uh, Marcus and I, my friend, Laura Butler, we, we, we played live at a place and, when I told what the story was about, it was really moving to me that others so could relate to the song. It was actually one of the, the most appreciated songs in the set list. It was really great. And uh, I know my brother would certainly appreciate that. And um, uh, so, but I want, I want in his memory, I wanted to have something that was uh, upbeat and rockish and, uh, and uh, fun, but also with a good message, like, you know, you got to keep going and, and uh, give it your best shot and all that you get give. And that's what he did. So, uh, so that's and Juanita says great tribute for your brother. Sorry for your loss. Love this song. And Maureen, uh, I love that. What a beautiful tribute. And Kathleen in New York there says claps and thumbs up. Loved it. June yeah. says so much heart. Uh, Diane McKenna, Sean would be very proud of you. Just like Harry and I are beautiful tribute to a close friend XO. And that's, you know, again, going back to sometimes uh, like we're talking about how the road can take us in a lot of different places that we've never predicted when, when we were nine and 10 years old and on the swings and playing baseball and uh, swimming in the ocean and doing all the things we did. We don't know where life's going to take us and all the things that are going to happen to us. We always think it's going to stay the way we were when we were nine or 10 years old. Yeah. I say, I always say nine or 10, because when you're two or three, you don't really remember. But yeah. when you're eight, nine, 10, 11, that's a really good, or at least I know in my childhood, that was a really good period. I just love that you're still carefree and you still have everybody sort of watching over you, but you can, but you know, the cord is being loosened a little bit where you can explore a little bit more. Um, and art and music and creativity sometimes comes out of, again, lost and life lived and experiences. Um, you know, when you look at all of this work that you do and have done all these years and continue to do, Dan, what are some of those things that continue to inspire you and give you great blessing and joy to continue to create? Well, I, 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 it, I am responsible for the, for the talent that I've been blessed with, Jim. And that's the way I feel. It is it is my responsibility to 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 create. Was there an aha moment that triggered that for you, or did you Never. always think that way as a kid? No, I I I, I think it, the aha moment came with, with you know the acting was one thing, but the when I had the realized I had the ability to write, I. It, it became a it, it became uh, it's a joy to have it, but I also took it as a as a as a, a responsibility because if it's almost as if you know um, I don't know you you uh, if 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 I have it if I get if I have this ability to do this and I. If I get a, you know, whether it's a song or it's an idea for a play, if I don't, if I get it, this energy to create it, then you have to use it's it. It's gone. It's if I don't do it, if I don't do it, if I don't 
if I don't create it, whatever it is, a song or a lyric or whatever, whatever it leads to, if I don't do it, it won't exist. And that, that the violin wouldn't exist. Homeless and how we got that wouldn't exist. The Broadway lights wouldn't exist. And these things have brought me an immense amount of, 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 of joy of, uh, you know, frustration, you know, I, you can't say everything is, is, is roses all the time. It's not, it, it, you, you, but it's part of the deal. And if I, if I stop it and I, I don't, then what, Jim, what, what, what is it? What is it? What, what, I wouldn't be sitting here with you and I wouldn't be sharing this to this, these experience to others. And, um, uh, so that drives me. It really does. It, it is, it is, it is, it is driving. And because I've had that talent and, and in an unexpected way, uh, I've written seven full length plays, released a full album and written a screenplay and have a, about 30 other songs. And, and I just finished a new play last week. And my feeling is I've been blessed during this time, during this time to be able to have that, to share these uh, things. And not to say everything is, uh, as, as, as you know, with the plays, they're thought provoking praise, some are dramas, some are comedies, but they, they are, uh, um, I've used that time and it has allowed me as a creative person. I've been, I've been blessed to have that during this time. And I'm very, very fortunate to have that outlet. And what, what, pleases me is that uh it's it, it can help other people it helps uh uh it, it you know bring the world a little bit closer and that 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 is important to me and um i i that's what drives me i write every single day every day every day and without uh without fail it, it, it I, and i don't it can be one word and it's a full day of work you know, it doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be, right, right. you know, you're, you're climbing a mountain every day. And I, when I, are you I, a perfectionist? I, I wouldn't, I, 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 I want things done right and I want them done well. And, uh, but when that comes the case and it comes with, when you're talking about, is it hard to let go of things, uh, with, with the music specifically, it's been beneficial because I, I can write lyrics real well. I think that's my, my strong point. I'm a I'm a decent play, piano player when I come to my own stuff, but there is a heck of a lot better musicians out there than I a, a, am able to be or will ever be, and so I trust in the talent that comes by my way. And and having Scott Herzog and others uh, saying this, and but when I in recommendation, who would be good at this that? But I have a I have an orchestra in my head. I hear where things should be i hear where violins could be like even with with uh you know with uh that this is just me and me and a violinist but i needed knew it needed to be in there and you know you bounce ideas off people and where things can be and uh so you that creative process opens up that world and but you bet when it when it when it when it's done i'm hands-on with with how it sounds and how it uh, to the to the to the minor note, I, I I hear it whether it's where it needs to be, and mm -hmm. um, I do that. And I also have an ear with it with the plays. When it's off, it's it's you you it, it's like you know you get this kind of yeah. Know. I'm that way too. A certain thing with my own work. Yeah, yeah. Think, you know where it is. You just you know, know where it should be and. Yeah, yeah. And it, but it's how you it's how you you you, you know ev wrap around that. And I, I I when I teach playwriting and acting, which I've done, it's had the fortunate time to do. You know, I artists are at their best when they're most relaxed and they're most creative, and they're you know, and that's what I think. What you bring about in your guests, you you really you you allow us to you know create in front of this, but it's because of your professionalism that you're able to allow us to do that. And I think with a creative person, when, you know, feedback or an artist or somebody who's giving a struggle with a, a script or something, it's how you, uh, you know, relate to them and 
put them at ease. And then they, it's funny, they just take off because they feel confident that you're confident in their, in their talent. And so uh, that's, that's really a, um, you know, a, 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 you know, something that's part of the process. And, uh, you know, with, with um, art, when I talk to folks about it, I, or any, any creative field and the frustration sometimes of, of, of finishing something. If you approach art as a slab of clay and you, it is up to you to create it into something, you know, there's going to be moments in our lives where you're working every day. You got 30 hours, you got kids, you got all kinds of things going on in your life. But you have to get the one chip in. You have to you have to whittle away at it. And but if you get one chip in, that can be a full day. That's a full day of work. Because the next day you got the one, it's gonna to lead to two, it's gonna to lead to three. Before you know it, your 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 slab of clay is is starting to shape into something more. And you just don't know what that little you don't know what the little uh, stroke of the brush put the smirk on the Mona Lisa that mm -hmm. made it what it was. It could have been something quite subtle that day. Could have been something just a touch. So look at the uh, look at the. I mean, I've known about them for years because of my affiliation for years with public television. But look at the all of a sudden resurgence of interest in somebody like Bob Ross, the painter, hmm. who did these, what seemed basic, easy to do paintings on television, talking to you one-on-one, -on -one, comforting you, making you feel like you can do it um, in a very warm and inviting, pleasant way. Right. That was part of his art. He can take that canvas and in 25 minutes create an incredible world and then let you know that you can create your own world and that there's nothing, there's no accidents, just happy accidents. I mean, it, that's so artful and people are really appreciating that now and they're actually craving it because it seems simpler. It seems more pure. It seems more innocent, more basic. And he's right there in front of you creating out of a blank canvas with titanium white on it, all of these works of art, but he's also making you feel like you're in on it and you're a part of it. And I think that anybody who does anything like this kind of work that we do, where we are presenting things to people, presenting visions and, and thoughts and ideas and hope and inspiration that, um, when you bring people in, when they feel like they're part of it, that they're not just observing it. Mm -hmm. They love observing it. But now more than ever, people want to feel like they're part of the creation, they're part of the, the situation. And I think somebody like a Bob Ross all those years ago, who you know passed away at a very young age of 52 mm -hmm. on 4th of July in 1995, had that he knew that that's what it was about and i think people now more than ever are craving things like that they're craving comfort solace peace uh because there's so much craziness going on in the world and everybody's talking at everybody and there's yelling and road rage and screaming and all of this chaos and divisiveness and they're actually going to the classic movies and the old TV shows and listening to the music and reading poetry and and watching you know uh classic films and, and just going out and gardening and doing the things that have always been there, the constants, but going to it more, the baking, the bread, the doing things that we've always had these opportunities to do, but never maybe allowed ourselves because the world and all the inbox emails and all of the social media and all the things that are out there, we have to tend to, and we always have to be a part of. So there's this craving of this simpleness that is actually a very beautiful thing. Uh, and I'm hoping that we rise out of all of the stuff that we've experienced truly. And I've said it multiple times on this show, uh, empathetic, much more empathetic, more compassionate, more unified, because everybody should be a part of the, the party. 
everybody should be invited to happy hour and yeah. and be unified and compassion empathetic and and listen more as opposed to constantly talk at uh, bring people in and i think you know those are all simple values those are things that really make life much more fulfilling and satisfying and i think that uh you know, some of what you we just showed tonight really harkens back to that in the modern vibe that it has. It still has some of that old school, authentic, empathetic message underneath it. At least that's what I got. And obviously the viewers did because it touched them and the love at ease in certain ways. So I think that is the beauty of being able to reach people. And, and these like a Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers, another public television reference. But he knew what it took not just to reach children, but look at all of the adults who grew up with him, who miss him and wish he was here right now, comforting us through the chaos that we've been experiencing. How amazing that something like that is. Um, and when we have, you know, these people and these experiences, and when we have the opportunity to do it ourselves, like you, there's been a theme here, like you're saying, this you 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 have to do this work this is you you cannot do this work you couldn't be sitting in a cubicle just putting you know data in all day long and not doing what you do you have to do it it's it's yeah. compelling you to do it i'm the same way so i fully understand that um I think I'd be a, a tiger trapped in a, a cage you know a <laughs> so it's, it's harkening back I, I i i i respect uh those who do that and because i they are, um, you know, and getting back to uh, working class, the, the heroes, you know, they, 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 everybody has a job to do. And I certainly have side jobs right. too, which is the way it is. And, we you, all do. you know, I think that uh, that's what's, um, you know, but if you make, if you need to do it, you will do it. <laughs> and that's the, that's the way you, you know, you, you I approach it and um, uh, I'm, I'm, that's the way I approach things like that. So, and to when you bring people in and when they feel like they're a part of it, like, you know, these, the, the Bob Rosses, the, the Fred Rogers, these types of people, it's a beautiful thing. It really is, you know, well, it really is. I've been honored to be on your show. I know that. And I appreciate all everybody's, uh, uh, support and, um, all those who tuned in and who I don't know, but, but no now and and all those who I know very well and I am honored by uh, everybody their love and support w of, of me and uh, in so many ways and um, I'm, I'm I value it and I don't take it for granted at all and never will so I, I certainly appreciate uh, Jim your belief it, it means such a great deal to me that you've you know asked me to be here tonight and I'm honored and uh june of course who uh suggested it yeah and so hopefully your audience uh had a real fun time tonight i know we i did, did. we and, did uh, we did playing the videos and it was just really talking about the plays and um i'm really really f fortunate and hopefully i mentioned everybody I, I i robert sullick who i learned piano from i popped in my head and uh chad austin and emma uh mcglinchey from the cool Avenger, and I don't think I mentioned them, but I just want to make sure that they were had a shout out as well because uh, I try to write a few notes, but I, I don't yeah. want to burden myself with too much. But so right, it's uh, uh, it's I don't even call these interviews; I call these conversations. These are conversations, absolutely. Here's another cool shot too, doing your yeah. thing. Yeah, that was done for Grave Diggers. That was uh, we recorded that again at Scott Herzog's studio, third story recording, and that was. Uh, me playing the role of uh, the radio play of Grave Diggers that uh, I'm really, really it's just thrilling that it's got a, such a response to it. And that's, you know, that that's these plays and all these stories. Each one is such a unique type of thing. They don't come in their uh, th Those two characters really battle out in regards to who they think is at fault about the world's issues and you know, and I don't shy away from it. And I don't, I don't shy away from any of the material that I approach. There's and, another one. Yeah. And that's, that's, uh, that's the, um, uh, the violin in Prague. That's how mm. violin. And they just did a 
amazing job. That that poster, even the the, um, the cast here in New York was like, man, where do we? <laughs> <laughs> We like it. poster, man. Whoa, that's cool. We could, you know, so they were. We had a great poster too. Don't get me wrong, but it was cool. It was just different. And so they've done a, a fabulous job with without in the Ungelt Theater. And I know they got phenomenal response from it. And I'm thrilled that they did. I I, I look forward to go in the Prague one day to see the show. I'm hoping mm. that'll be much sooner than later. And um, I think it will be. And that's very I, cool. I, I, I uh, you know, with a lot of the piece, pieces that I write, depends, but many of them, uh, I, there is a there is a journey with these pieces. There is comedic moments in the most violent and uh, difficult times, but but uh, you know, thematically, a lot of the pieces uh, in moments of hopelessness, I approach them with hopefulness. And I, I like to end those things a lot of times with with with, with that because uh, even with uh, um, with um, uh, the the last of the wild ones, you have the the, the kids at the end and walking the sunlight and moving towards the sun and all that. There is a sense of hopefulness in 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 it, and and there's a ho- sense of hopeful hopefulness now too. We 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 are we will come out of this uh, time in our lives. Yeah, it, it, we will, and we're going to do great things as a as a country and as a world. And despite uh, you know hearing otherwise, we will we we are doing good things, and we will continue to. And I I, I know it. And um, uh, I I with my work as a as a playwright, an actor, a songwriter, I'm I approach that with. This is this is what I'm putting out there uh, and uh, may not always want to be, you know, uh, with the, the topics that they're, they're, they're sometimes they're combative, but they all, all end up with truth and, and uh, love and uh, that's right. passion and compassion. And um, that's what I, you know, go for. Passion, and, empathy, unity. It's the best way to be, right? To to. I'm a Libra, so I'm all about balance and harmony. <laughs> so we always look for ways to balance things, to find things harmonious, and to bring everybody together in a balanced, harmonious way. Not always easy. Sometimes I've told people I should have been born on Venus, the planet of love. <laughs> but they say, uh, no, you got to be here because you help balance this place out. <laughs> right on, right on. It's called Earth. Well, what I look forward to during this time is when uh, we have lunch. Uh, so hopefully I see that would be great. Yes. I want to show you a couple of quick comments that have come in from our uh, loveties before we go. Uh, Anne in Jacksonville, Florida says so many emotions, great music and conversation. Loved every minute. Thanks Dan for sharing your many talents. Good night, Jim, well. Dan and everyone. Yeah. Tesla Bella says, thank you, Dan, for sharing your wonderful gifts and your generous spirit. I loved our time together. Thank you, Mr. Levity. Once again, you bring a slice of heaven into our lives. XXOO. Good night. Thank you, Tess, for those beautiful words. Linda Tracy, love that song, Dan. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Absolutely. June, so lovely to see and sharing all. XOXO to the umpteenth. Thank you as well, my friend, June and Amy. Great lovity fail tonight. She felt the lovity tonight. Kathleen, uh, this was a great conversation. Great music. Thank you, Dan and Jim. Our pleasure. Juanita in South Africa. Uh, this was a great conversation. Thank you, Dan, for sharing your beautiful music and stories with us. Indeed, and an inspiring episode. And uh, Christine Clifton in North Carolina. Yes, especially during this past year. We have wanted to surround ourselves mostly virtually with those that bring us the warm fuzzies, genuine happy feelings, people like Mr. Rogers, Bob Ross, and you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Um, actually, uh, I don't know if you know the composer, Jimmy Roberts. He was on the show, uh, I was a, maybe December. We had an epic conversation, a lot of fun. He played live. It was just really great. And one of his uh, longtime friend and collaborators with him, I guess, saw the episode and she uh, wrote to him and she, she had loved our conversation. She loved everything about the episode. And it was very funny because it was the first time I heard this ever. Um, but, and I shared it. Uh, she said, uh, <laughs> she said, Jim is a Mr. Rogers for adults. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. 
I said, I'm oh. compliment. That's great. I said, <laughs> I said, I'll take it. I'll That's take right. it. Uh, big shoes to fill with that. I, you I tell you. Uh, Kathy Short says, a very enjoyable evening. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Our pleasure. Kathy, Maureen in Arizona, Dan, your stories and music give me all the feels. I have such respect for you. Thank you for sharing your evening with us. Absolutely. And uh, good stuff here. I hope the show met whatever expectations you had and you enjoyed the time with me oh, as much I, as yeah, I had with you, Dan. I wasn't sure how I uh, would fill, fill the time. I was looking on some of your episodes. I, I was talking to my dad. And I'm like, Man, Jim, Jim goes for like two two hours. I don't know if I'll be able to fill all that, but sure enough, we did, Jim and I. And it was your great help with that. And uh, I, I definitely appreciate you and your all your your guests and your team and and uh, all those who have supported it and um, all the loveties. <laughs> yeah, it's really great for you to play all the videos. Just really means a lot. So uh, hopefully they can enjoy this the the albums and eight for you is the one and. Edge of America bound and Amazon, Boston. Spotify. You said all the uh, yeah, Amazon and Spotify. And, um, uh, hopefully I, I have some projects coming up and, um, when the theater's open, when the theater's open up, we, 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 I'm, 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 I'm hopefully hitting the ground running with some projects. So I'm, I'm looking forward to keeping you posted up that and your, your, uh, uh, you know, your uh, audience. And, um, I, I'm really looking forward to, uh, everything, uh, moving forward this year. I, and I, I think we all are. And I, uh, we're going to do uh, great things together. So um, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree 100%, my friend, and we'll keep the porch light on for you here at the show. Oh, and wow. again, uh, we toast you, Slancha. Oh, yes. Have well, a great rest fun. of your evening. Chin -chin. Cheers. <laughs> and uh, thanks for all the time. And it always goes by, you know, I always say, to the guests, you know, how much time do you have? And we don't put a clock on it. Sometimes we do an hour, hour and a half, two hours, whatever it is. It depends, you know, on just flow and content and whatever's going on. And, um, well, please, we had a lot of content. So that was cool. We had a lot of content <laughs> and, uh, keep the train on the track the whole bit. And, uh, I love doing it. And, uh, you know, you Sometimes tell. we have conversations like what we had, nothing scripted. No, some, some guests say, Oh, are there questions that I, we got to go over, you know, beforehand? I'm like, no, it's just going to be a conversation. We'll let it flow and go because sometimes when that happens, you get some of the most incredible um, result, creativity and connection. And then other people feeling that energy in a warm sort of welcoming way. And uh, so Cool yeah. stuff. Cool stuff. I'm so happy you had this opportunity to share your journey and your awesome talents tonight. Dan, our entire family is proud of you. So proud of you. The best is yet to be. I agree 100%. Thank you, Linda. Good stuff. Good stuff, my friend. And yeah, June goes, well, amen. Oh, that's great. Wow. So we'll keep the light on for you. Let's stay in touch, my friend. Uh, we'll have that lunch. We'll get together in the big yeah. city. You let me know when it you're, you're, you know, works for you. It's on me. So. <laughs> oh, uh -uh. <laughs> Let's see. Gee, I haven't had lobster in a while. Yeah, I think right. Well, whoops. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, it, say, Jim. Yeah, that's it, Jim. Nothing more than a tuna melt and a hot chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that works at a good New York diner, right? <laughs> exactly. Right on. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, thank you so much. And thank yeah. you to your audience. And it's just been a meaning, meaningful, uh, joyous night. And uh, I'm so grateful. So yeah, God bless. And, uh, best to you. Best of health to you. And thanks to your family for tuning in and commenting and watching. They're all welcome to join us uh, again on our series. Bye. So yeah. I love you all. And it means a lot. And so, uh, uh, shout out to everybody in my old neighborhood and, and also my neighborhood here in New York. So it's absolutely. It's so, uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thank you. So it means a great deal. You Bye. got it, Dan. Have a good night. Okay. You take care. Well, you do the same. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye Bye. now. Dan McCormick, actor, singer, playwright, musician, all of the above and sharing it all with us here on the Jim Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. And we thank him for that. If you missed any of the episode or any of our episodes, there's over 370 plus episodes, all available on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV right there, 24-7, 365. And again, 
We thank Dan for joining us and spending all the time with us. And again, as I've said multiple times, we just let it roll and uh, we don't put a length on the shows. We just let it roll. These are very rare, special episodes. I think we've created a really um, a very special, unique place. Again, it harkens back to those old school legendary talk show hosts where they really had good solid conversations mixed in with levity, entertainment, and wherever it went, memorable episodes. So we're sort of hearkening back to those old school ways of doing, you know, I work in this industry of television, radio and everything, and I've always admired those old school ways of doing, having conversations and meaningful uh, episodes, and then bringing in a modern twist, uh, you know, modern vibe of today, taking those two worlds and bringing them together in what we call the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. So this was a cool episode. And again, if you missed anything, feel free to uh, check it all out on our YouTube channel. It's all there for you. And again, as we always say, share the levity, tell everybody about the Gym Masters Show Live. It's uh, really, really cool when you do that. And um, we thank Dan for joining us and uh, we'll have him back as well. I know you guys... Uh, would love to have him back. So we will definitely have him back as well. We have some great guests coming up this week. We have Queen Andrea joining us. She's an extraordinary singer, songwriter. She has an inspirational bent. She's going to be with us. Also, Jenna Robbins, another wonderful producer, director, performer, joining us this week on the Gym Masters Show Live. All you have to do is look at our Facebook page, Gym Masters TV. Look under the events section and you can see some of the upcoming episodes this week. Also, our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, has the events section coming up as well. Uh, extraordinary uh, playwright and director, producer, performer, Charles Bush is joining us this week as well. Yep. Yeah. Oh, an amazing and incredible and renowned singer songwriter. Uh, we have uh, Joni Pilato coming up on Friday this week, live from Chicago. This is going to be absolutely amazing. She is all excited. She has a new album out, and uh, we can't wait to have her on the show as well. Did you know that Patrick McEnroe is going to be joining us too? Yeah. The tennis star, as well as ESPN commentator. His brother, of course, is John McEnroe, another tennis legend. Patrick's going to be joining us in just a couple of weeks as well. So is Lisa Kelly, longtime friend of mine, from originally from Celtic Woman. And she has her own uh, voice academy in uh, Georgia, USA. Interviewed her multiple times on public television. She's going to be joining us real soon. Matter of fact, this weekend... Ava is going to be joining us. She was originally with Celtic Woman, and then she branched out, and she has her own epic career. She's going to be here on Saturday in the evening. That is at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And then uh, also, we've got a very, very moving show Saturday afternoon as Dr. Barbara Milton is going to be with us. Uh, she wrote this wonderful book, Heeding the Caregiver. It's about her mother's journey with Alzheimer's. And uh, Dr. Milton, who I know is Barbara because she's actually a close dear friend, uh, has uh, gone through a cancer battle, an intense cancer battle herself. So she wrote this extraordinary book. She's going to be sharing that with us Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. The incredible singer-songwriter of Brazilian descent uh, and uh, an incredible person, uh, Nathan Pacheco. Last time we saw each other, we were at Carnegie Hall. And I was emceeing and he was one of the performers and uh, we just had an epic time. Interviewed him actually several times on public television and we've always stayed in touch. And Nathan's going to be here very soon on the show as well. These are just some of the guests. Ryan Kelly from Celtic Woman, not Celtic Woman, <laughs> not from Celtic Woman, Celtic. There's so many Celtic, uh, Celtic Thunder, <laughs> Celtic Thunder, uh, Ava. And Lisa were with Celtic Woman. <laughs> and uh, Ryan, definitely Celtic Thunder. Also, Byrne and Kelly with Neil Byrne, who you know, who was on our show uh, recently uh, for the second time. He was with us as a very special guest. So Ryan Kelly is going to be joining us real soon. And we look forward to uh, Ryan being with us here on the show. And uh, that's going to be fantastic. Really, really cool. Good times here on the Gym Masters Show Live, and we thank everybody for joining us. 
Um, I'm going to be back to work Thursday. Opening day, going to be different. I love being here live. Yes, watch in the archives, Kathleen. Absolutely. And hopefully we will be there to join you. I know they're only opening, uh, Kathleen works at City Field with the Mets plague. And hopefully uh, they'll be opening up a little bit more. I think it's only 10% capacity, right? Uh, you have a good time, Kathleen. We're always here for you. Jim, it doesn't get any better than evenings with you and your special guests. You always bring incredible conversations combined with music, laughter, tears, and love it. You are loved. Thank you very much. And I want to thank you again, Maureen, for this absolutely beautiful gift. Again, I want to make sure that people could see it. Mr. Lovety, hashtag master's mantra, is this wonderful gift of this fantastic glass with this beautiful inscription here that she had added. Um, let's see if we can bring it here too. Has it come out better there? There you go. Mr. Lovety, hashtag master's mantra. That's from... Maureen, we toast you and we thank you very, very much, Maureen. A very beautiful gift uh, that you sent along this past week. And we will treasure that forever uh, and use it often. And we wanted to, uh, I opened up some gifts over the weekend, but I wanted to make sure it was a night where you were here so we can open it up and share with you when we have some green tea in here. It is beautiful. And she had it all uh, custom etched. Mr. Lovety, hashtag master's mantra. Perfect gift. Love it. And uh, something came in also from Juanita that tomorrow we're going to open up on the show. Can't wait. So Juanita, thank you very much for doing what you've done. And I'll share what that is tomorrow, gang. Thank you, Maureen. Not just like it. We absolutely love it. I think that's really, really, really special. Thank you very much, Christine. Appreciate that very, very much. And uh, Dante as well, Danilo and San Diego. Good night, Mr. Lovety. Good night, all Loveties. Always good when you're with us, uh, Danilo. We love when you're here. And uh, Linda says, Dan, I'm outside on the deck. I know Sean can hear you singing this song for him from heaven. That is beautifully said, Linda. Absolutely beautifully said. And that was a wonderful tribute to his brother, Sean. Uh, June, thank you very much. Always great when you're here with us as well. You take care and you be well, my friend. I hope to see you soon before April 21st. Uh, Karen Campbell Green says, I rewatched Sharon McKnight's episode earlier today. I hope Sharon comes back on. She was fantastic as well. All the episodes are on our YouTube channel. And um, he answered this earlier. He loved being a lovety. They all, all the guests love it when they become loveties. They really, really do. I usually, um, after the show, we usually chat with each other. Uh, either it's a phone call or it's a text or it's an email. We always uh, connect with the guests and or they connect with me. I just uh, chatted, matter of fact, earlier today with Rodney Allen Rippey. If you didn't see the episode with former child star Rodney Allen Rippey, check it out. We had so much fun. It's on our YouTube channel. He was in all those Jack in the Box commercials and tons of great shows you know, classic television shows, movies. He was in Blazing Saddles with Mel Brooks. Uh, I was on the phone today chatting with uh, Ronnie Allen Rippey and also Stan Goldman. Stan Goldman, you may remember, was a legal expert and um, phenomenal guest. He was on CNBC and, um, and CBS and Fox and so many channels as a legal expert. He covered the uh, Michael Jackson trial, the O.J. Simpson trial and so many others. Timothy McVeigh, and we had an epic conversation with him, and his episode is on our YouTube channel as well. It was really, really a very, very inspiring episode. Stan called me uh, we over the weekend, over the Easter weekend, and then we chatted today, and he thoroughly enjoyed um, all the interaction with everybody, and he enjoyed the episode. So uh, two guests we chatted with today, Rodney Allen Rippey and uh, Stan Goldman, who had called me uh, to thank me again, even though we talked after the shows, they want to thank me again for being a special guest on the show. And we really appreciate that. Thanks, Jim. Have a great night. Good night. All stay safe. Kathleen, you as well. And we're still working on that Easter box you sent filled with all those goodies. Oh my God. <laughs> we need an army of people to help us eat all those goodies. Have a good night, Amy. You too as well, Maureen. And everybody says night. And it's like the Waltons. I mean, matter of fact, did you see the two episodes uh, we have with Walton's stars, Sissy Wellman, and then also Cammie Cotler from the Waltons? 
They're all available on our YouTube channel. Absolutely. At least the first gamers or the first games are day games. So you will be here. We will be here with you. Karen Campbell Green says, Stan and Rodney were both awesome guests. They sure were. They sure were. And you guys are terrific. So we got a lot of amazing shows and amazing guests uh, coming up. We thank you very much uh, for all of your time and attention. If you haven't subscribed uh, to our YouTube channel, we would really love it if you do. And it really, really helps our show because uh, we have some big plans further. I mean, we've gone even beyond what we expected with the show already. But we have some major plans with the series. And we're glad you're all a part of it. You're all here with us. And um, subscribing to the YouTube channel, sharing the YouTube channel, sharing the links to the episodes in the YouTube channel. Uh, we would love it. And uh, click the notification bell so you don't miss any of the content as well. Really important. Good night, everyone. Back to work later after a lovely long weekend. I was on the air actually earlier today um, on the radio hosting with my professional work. And then I'm on the air hosting three uh, news programs, radio show news programs and interviews uh, tomorrow. Very, very busy week with my professional work. Um, but that's a good thing. We love it. Bring it on. We love it. We love busy and connecting with people. And then showing up here in the evening with all of you with the Gym Master Show Live. Don't forget, as we always say, gang, um, don't forget to smile. Part of our routine here at the close at the end. Don't forget to smile. And don't forget to share the lovity whenever you can. Share the lovity. Find your Zen place. Mine is the ocean. But of course, loving family and friends is number one. And then cycling, tennis, music, writing. But the ocean really speaks to me. And I can't wait to dive in the ocean soon. Missing the ocean. Dear ocean, here I come. We're close to the ocean. It's just a little chilly to go in it now. And of course, my work in television, radio, and stage, and on camera, on air, behind the scenes. Love it all uh, throughout the years. Oh, got to mention, Dee Wallace is with us this Saturday. Legendary Hollywood veteran film and television actress Dee Wallace is this Saturday. That's right. You don't want to miss it. She's going to be here Saturday night on the Jim Masters Show Live. She's amazing. She's been in epic movies, epic television shows. Oh, boy. Looking forward to Dee Wallace this Saturday night. On the Jim Masters Show Live, where, again, you can find us uh, every single day, just about, just about every single day, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And again, sometimes we do bonus shows, pop-up shows, host chat shows, and we do some uh, shows at earlier times as well based on the guests' availability, plus the time zone and based on my schedule and all the other cool things that are happening in our lives. Kathleen says, sleep well, smile, absolutely. You guys are the best. Thanks for joining us tonight on the Gym Master Show Live from all around the world. We love it and we love all of you. We showed this a little earlier, but we'll show it, show it again. We were showing uh, Dan this. Relax. Don't forget to love one another. Don't forget to breathe. Don't forget to, if you notice the hat's not on, you know why? Because the hat fell off. <laughs> the hat fell off the head. I don't need these anymore. The hat fell off the head earlier when we were full screen with another screen. The hat just went, just too bad. That would have been so funny if it, you, we saw that. But it happened when we were showing a full screen of something and I wasn't on screen. The hat went, I think the headphones pulled it off. It went boop and fell on the floor. You didn't hear it because it's a soft hat. So that's where the hat went. So here we are. I know the hair looks very short, but it's not. <laughs> it, we're coming up on a year soon. Just a couple more weeks, it'll be a year. It's now a challenge. Now it's a challenge to see how long we can go. The year it, the year mark is what we're aiming for with the hair length, that is. Uh, some people really love it, too. It's, uh, it's interesting. Good night, Jim and uh, all the lovely uh, friends. It was really great, uh, a great lovely evening together. And Dan is definitely a lovely. See you all soon. Till next time. Absolutely. We'll be here tomorrow with another extraordinary guest on the Gym Master Show Live. So again, relax, breathe, love one another, take care of one another, and love yourself. Don't forget to love yourself because you're of great value and everybody's welcome here at our show. All zip codes, heights, weights, genders, religious or political views, doesn't matter. Uh, just come and join us every night for a good time. We always learn something. We're always inspired and we always have a few laughs along the way here on the Gym Master Show Live. So for all of us, thanks again for joining us. 
We love having you here. Keep spreading the word. Keep telling everybody about our amazing and unique Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. It means a great deal. And we'll see you guys tomorrow night, okay? Thanks for being with us. We love you all. Have a good night.